This time we're going to head over to Mantic Games. Kings of War slash, I think it's uh, Vanguard, might be the other system that you can use this little ice elemental with. Either way, he's pretty fun. I had painted this in the past in acrylics. Couldn't actually locate those pictures, but we're going to try him this time messing around with some oils. And yes, these are the oil paints that I made myself. And the, like I said, the process is very, it's pretty darn simple. Okay, let's let's see if I can find my cerulean blue here real quick. There it is. Regular Windsor Newton oil paint. Just a little bit of the high quality white spirits here. This happens to be from Speedball. I do recommend this if you can get it. I know lots of people try to substitute other things. This is not as hard to get as, I don't know, I have an easy time finding it on Amazon. And it's not terribly expensive. Combine these two, and they vary. So something like here, this is Terra Rosa. Still haven't actually had a chance to put a label on it. This took maybe 35% white spirits. I just redid my olive green over here, and holy smokes, I kept putting more and more and more white spirits. This must be almost... 65% or more white spirits in it. Again, this is 35. This is still probably a thicker consistency than this. And we got Armored Wolf in the house. Yes, well, I'm... Actually, I think uh, there was a bunch of people because that last session... Oh, thank you so much for the cheer and the bits. Where's where's Spellbrush? Where's Propellus? He's going to get some... Look at that. There's a whole line of those things. He's going to get all of them. Whoa, one's trying to get out of the cup. Thank you so much. That is appreciated. Yeah, you know, the other thing too is I think uh we haven't really focused much on the range of blues. That's what we got over here. We've got ourselves a I think that's our ultramarine blue. We got thalo blue there. There's the cerulean blue, titanium white, Payne's gray, essentially different colors of blue. Actually I've got ourselves an olive green. I was thinking of painting the base with it, but then I realized oh we got a numbskull in the house too. <laughs> Well, it's right to here. This is from Mantic Games. It's Kings of War is the system, and we are going to be working on some blues. So you see that figure down in the, or that illustration down in the lower left-hand corner there? I, I'm not necessarily going to match that. Oh, we got a Techno Cat in the house. How are you doing? Uh, is is Draxa still? No. Is, uh, uh, is, is uh, Thunderdome, is he still going? I had to uh, duck out of his stream, sadly, a little while ago. We're going to start these in the usual way. We've got our sponges here. Ultramarine blue. Ooh, Payne's gray. Maybe a little phthalo blue. Then we're going to take ourselves some of that white spirits. It's in this little container here. Chuck it out there. I'm going to maybe toss a little bit of cerulean blue there. This is going to be the most interesting pre-wash, whatever you want to call it, color that I have tried in quite a while. Usually it's an earth tone. Lately I've been doing more, say, the olive green and such. Let's get a little touch more. Paint's gray in there. And here I am about to rush around on this thing. Ah, oh, he's almost done. Okay. Because I know, well, he was almost done. He was starting to put the skinks on that... Uh, Engine of the yeah, engine of the gods there. No, I wish it wasn't an no, nah, maybe it was. I forget. He was starting to actually put that on a base too, I think. So I think he was probably delirious about that. Yeah, well I was I was wondering and we've talked this over with a couple of folks wondered what will return to work impact have just in general besides, okay, maybe people have to stream at different times, will it really affect people watching? Because, well, you know, <laughs> I've been walking to the store with somebody on a Twitch stream because that thing called the phone and the internet can, can do that. So I, I just, I don't know what the broader impact is going to be with that. Hopefully it hasn't been too negative an impact for you. Yeah, let's do some more. I think uh, I could swear that uh, Crocodile was actually live at the same time as as, Dra as uh, Thunderdome also. 
And I kept thinking, well, how can he be live and on Drax's thing? It's like, no, he wasn't on Drax's thing. Because <laughs> Drax wasn't going tonight. Shows what I know. Uh, Numbskull says, I'm too, in too essential. I haven't enjoyed any time off. Yeah, for, for me, <laughs> this hasn't... It, it's... There has been... Well, it went from a 24-7 type of environment to... 42.10. If, you, if there's 42 hours in a day and 10 days in a week, that's pretty much how it's gone here. Because, oh my goodness. Uh, the other day, I think I got to bed at 7 o'clock in the morning. That's getting to bed at 7 in the morning. <laughs> that was not terribly... That wasn't super. That wasn't super fabulous. We'll just put it that way. Now, I, I don't really necessarily want to repeat that tonight. I kind of sort of can't because, oh gosh, I'm not looking forward to this. I have got to try and make some 3D prints today, if any, just to see if the darn thing works. Because I am convinced there's something messed up with it as far as the physical mechanism goes. So I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to get a print out of that thing. And, geez... I was only just now, what in the, oh, we got, there's Drax, so Technocat and Drax, folks you need to follow, give Drax the follow, speak of the devil, now our, let's see, did you, did you finish that last dog that you started there, the Admech dog, I know you had one, I think you had just uh, stuck him on the, on the dog, and you were doing his helmet and stuff, and then I had to, Duck out of the stream to film a video. Boy, this is the weirdest pre pre wash that I have done. This is just bizarre. I am not used to that. <laughs> this is freaking hilarious. Wow, that is wild. I kind of been looking forward to this one here, doing it in oils, especially with all these shards of ice and stuff. Uh, yep, yep, Mantic. Did you ever paint any of the old rack in it? Yes, we, we painted a bunch of them back in the day. And then there was a resurgence. Uh, it was a commission that I had to do. And it was a bunch of the Rackham, the Confrontation Ogre type guys. So say we all. So oh. We all. Thanks so much for the subscription there, Drax. Here, we'll do the boom right there. Now, did you, uh, hopefully you got that video or the link to that video that I emailed to everybody that was a subscriber. If uh, if you didn't get that, just let me know, and I can shoot you a link to that. It was about painting white, because, well, lots of people were asking about that. I still haven't had a chance to get to my Lord of the Rings videos, because, well, Saruman, Gandalf, lots of white. I mean, heck, Gandalf, White Horse, White Wizard... All that sort of stuff. So I think, yeah, we've got that pretty well, pretty well staged. It is just weird seeing one of these guys in blue. And because we use Thalo blue and some of those brighter colors, we've already got a decent little sheen. Look at that. He's kind of starting to look like that picture already. That's pretty hilarious. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, and that for three months? Oh, okay. Well, I'll shoot you another one because, I mean, heck, three months, we got to get you some, some more stuff to look at because you're not busy enough. So we'll have to shoot you more things to check out. Let us... Hmm, let's start to do a little bit of combination of that ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. And it's interesting just how sneaky intense oils are i mean geez louise okay an example this dude here when i was looking at him and there's this also has the i had to have the fluorescent green oils on it i'm looking at this thing and i'm comparing them to the acrylic ones that also have fluorescent paints on them and he is every bit as intense he's almost more intense color wise this was done in acrylics right this one was done in oils. Well, first of all, there's not a single person that could walk up to either one of these and tell the difference, except that the oils actually have more, more Shazam to them. 
I'm really shocked at that. And it's been that it's been the case multiple times too. Oh, let's see, got the rest of my coming in like the on the third. And there's what two more? Two more dog yeah, two more dogs left. I got both of them, numbskull. Uh I would I wish I could be just working with the spool printer right now, but everybody wants me to print miniatures, which of course that is not that the spool printer is child's play to be working with, but you also don't have to dip that in a vat of, well, resin. You also don't have to dip it in the rubbing alcohol. You don't have to keep it out of the sun, then in the sun, not poison yourself. So I, I wish it could have been the spool printer, but, well, companies, they're not real good at, well, listening. So... <laughs> Such as such. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's a Thalo blue. Let's see. Now, well, gee, I guess it's going to be time to be working on those helicopters then pretty soon because you really bashed your way through the through the flyboys and, well, now through the doggies. So that that's leaving those, those helicopters. Look at that. Really enjoying that blue. Uh, yeah, the last one I did was with the with the acrylic. It's not like that was a horrible thing, but doing this with the oils, oh my gosh, it is going to be so much easier to do all these freaking blends because it's not going to dry on me. Uh, let's see, gotten better at color matching between my acrylics and oils. Uh, thankfully, Bliss lists the actual pigments, which helps a lot. Let's see, what was the thing? Oh, it was uh, it was the matter colors, right? That you were that was the one you were sort of researching, looking to see what's in there. Uh, well, uh, we haven't actually delved into our white here at all. Now, again, we're gonna. Do a thorough cleaning of our brush here. I mean, this is like, that's some intensive clean. That's like practically a sonic scrub right there of that brush. Then we're going to go back in here to our white, phthalo blue. And we're going to have a couple of different types of blue. So this is going to have a little bit more of a reddish tint to it. Uh, let's see, Numskull said there is a water-soluble resin for Elegu Mars. And Oblate, how are you doing? Yeah, I, what I'm going to have to start doing, and ugh, it's going to be rough because I, well, let's put it this way, I have really enjoyed being able to have other people's streams on in the background, or like you know, Drax being generous enough to let people actually chat in the Discord and stuff. I really love doing that. That is very fun. But I'm going to have to start playing more videos on the finer points of printing because, you know, the useless instruction manual prefaced the word useless. Oh, let's see. You can't put it down the sink, though. It's still toxic. Now, I am definitely doing okay. We'll blade it. Well, because I got oil paints in my hand. And, and I'm doing the live thing, which means the voices in my head are not always necessarily just going to be the the dangerous ones. So that's always good. Look at that. We're doing the same old scrumbling. Wasn't that the word in the last... It's like the last stream, right? Scrumbling was the word that we came up with. There, get some more of our... Oh, look at this. Yes, I can do this with acrylic paints under certain circumstances. If I were to use, oh, let's say something like the Green Stuff World Intensity inks or the the contrast paints, something like that, for limited time only, I could be blending like this. But, eh, it would last for only a while. And then that opportunity would pass. This opportunity is going to stay with me the balance of this session and even into tomorrow morning but I'll tell you what I I'll bet anything that by this time tomorrow night all this is dry 
And I could be throwing my anti-shine over the top of it. Oh, let me see. Technocat, it's horrible for the environment. They should ban that water washable stuff. People just wash it down the sink anyway. Yeah, that is the... Well, what's what's the other thing, too, that you shouldn't be just uh, dumping down the... Well, even the... Uh, Oh, what is it that the uh, rubbing alcohol stuff? Basically, what I saw in my my research and what people have told me, it's rubbing alcohol. Just let it sit there; it'll evaporate. Then you could potentially just kind of take a paper towel and sort of clean out your vat. Ooh, that's a question. Oh, a pigeon is in the house. Was headed to bed when Twitch notified you. Oh yeah, Pfft. sleep. Who the heck needs that? This is a sleep-free zone right here. This, this, there's no snoozing in Wapleville. Heads up, baby. No snoozing in Wapleville. Maybe that should be... Maybe that should be my some kind of t-shirt design that I make. Just like a sleeping face with a big arrow through it or something like that. Or a big X. No sleeping here, baby. No sleeping on the job. Let's see. Now the the thing, the question that I had, and I was just I was pondering just as a quick little temporary thing, a, a vat for cleaning stuff. I was just gonna get me a couple of those tin foil type containers, or the you know, <clears throat> like you use at Thanksgiving to to bake a turkey in or something like that. You use it once, you chuck it in the garbage or whatever. I was thinking about getting one of those. Or a couple of those, maybe smaller ones, and just something so that I can try things out. So look at this here. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this is actually cut right here. Uh, sometime here, I've done it to other ones. I'll show you. Where's my other uh, green handle ones here? And so when the the you can see that's been through way too much basing right there. See how nasty that is on the end of there. Now sometimes I cut them like this. becomes a stipple brush. It becomes a spatter brush. Uh, look at look at that. Half the well, more than half of the paint is gone off the ferrule on that sucker. And then this is one. I might actually do that here. So see how the ends of those are all frayed and nasty. Uh, I just took a scissors cut those off and now I made a flat brush out of this thing let's see I, I have a paint a can of acetone I used to rinse my prints with works like a charm and oblate just started work now the one thing you notice is I haven't been doing a whole lot of thinning here and you don't see a lot of gloss on this do you and good grief I've been seeing people you know, they're, they're trying out their oils and such and it it looks like it looks like they're painting on glass. And I'm like, holy smokes! How much oil do they have in that paint there? Ah, uh, this this is like good grief. This is like luxury right here. The fact that I can just sit here, oh my goodness, and just pop this on here like this on every single one of these facets, and it's just going to blend because you know. It's oils. Man. Wow, that's going to be fun. And I'm also going to be switching up the colors here, too. We're not just going to be using white with this. This is going to be a blast. Man. So much fun. Oh, let me see. Uh, ZZZ, a, a line through its symbol. Well, as I do more of the the 3D printing, I mean, I, well, there's going to be a lot of hard lessons. There, There's no other way around it. I, it was this way with the oils. Like what I'm doing here, I couldn't have done this probably even two years ago. This would have been just a massive mess, or it would have been super shiny. And it would not have been dry by this time tomorrow night. I would have no hope of that. It's it's one of those things where you just you learn like this. Okay, I didn't have this type of palette for one thing. 
I wasn't working with an absorbent palette, and I was not doing this, where I'm scrubbing that paint into the brush. Wasn't doing that. Was not doing that before. So there's my cerulean blue mixed with white. And I, I think that is, that's something I always try to stress for folks, is that there's going to be a learning curve, just like people keep telling me. They say, look, that 3D printing stuff, it is not just, you know, fill a vat of resin, press the button, and out comes, yay, perfect print. It's like, yeah, you better hope those supports were in the right place. You better hope it's on a level surface. You better hope you got everything aligned. There's a whole host of things that could happen that'll make you sad. So I'm ready for that. I know that's coming. I just I try to do the same with the oils and tell people, look, give yourself, give yourself a chance with these things. Give yourself a chance to learn and well, screw up too. Oh, let me see. I'm just uh, looking to see. I'll keep up with the chats. Who wants to keep up with those. Wow, already so much fun. But. I'm going to go back the other way now. Oh, look at that. Look at that delicious ultramarine blue. That is tasty looking. It's also a reddish blue. The phthalo blue is going to be the greenish blue. And we're just going to take some of these panels, make some of them more of this reddish blue here. Now, also, another thing to contemplate, cerulean blue is going to be more of a dull blue. Ultramarine blue, this is a shiny blue. There's just no other way around it. It's got the shinies, which is why there's a little bit of the white in there, which is also why we're trying to really grind that into the brush over there. Just like Drax was talking about, where he's, he's looking up the different properties of the paint and such. Now here we're going with the phthalo blue. You just you have to be aware of what those properties are. Look at this. Now, now we're getting somewhere here. What are we, like 20 minutes into this thing? Oh, we got a gridlock sis in the house. It always kind of has been. Technocat, I guess that's why Thousand Suns were like one of the first non-Demon Hunter, well, they were the only non-Demon Hunter Space Marine chapter I ever did for myself. And, well, Dull Amroth, right? <laughs> I mean, hey, I guess because there's so many different, like this, you've got this warmer blue, now you got this more greenish blue that we're doing. Some blues are very opaque, like cerulean blue. Others, like this, also very translucent. Now let's get ourselves a... Let's blend this. So we chuck this right over here, right? Dang, this would have been nice. The last time I had to do one of these buggers, I would have really loved having this. Having these oils handy. I think I actually had the oils at the time. I just didn't really, even then. We, all. We, all. we got a beef in the hole with a big, uh, do, did you have tacos for dinner? I did, I had, there, let me grab some of those till the ice elemental chases them away. Thank you so much for that subscription. Another three month streak. Uh, what was I just talking about? Oh, uh, you won't believe, you won't believe this. But I must have been channeling you because today at the store, I am going to get me some. I'm going to get myself some ground pork, and I'm going to get myself some burrito mix, and I'm going to make me some pork burritos. Yeah. So that might mean on a Friday night stream or a Saturday stream. Now, I don't know what kind of mayhem might happen over the weekend. Let's just say there might be some Easter eggs uh, that might be dropping. During, during the next couple of, uh, yeah. Because the one thing I neglected, somehow I neglected the refried beans the last time I tried making one of my burritos. So we will correct that particular error this time around. 
and maybe go double refried beans. How long did the pizza last? And thank you so much for that. And we also have a question from Gasmania that I will get to. I actually ate <laughs> I ate the entire meat lover pizza myself. That's all gone. I I was literally eating like three pieces of that a day. That was that was pretty much all meals of the day was the meat lover's pizza. Kathy had a few pieces of the of the cheese pepperoni, but before that that had a chance to kind of get uh, funky. I actually threw it in the freezer. And I'm going to have me some of that this weekend. So the pizza is technically still around. Now, is it going to be as fresh coming out of the freezer as it might have been coming out of those lovely boxes? Probably not. Uh, what does Gasmini ask? Uh, great to see you use the oils on a big guy. I'm trying to work up the courage to tackle the artisan guild. Oh, the manticore. Now that's the... I, I've got a... Well... I don't know if you heard the earlier conversations about the, the 3D printers. That's the other reason why I desperately want to get those going. Because basically everything that Artisan killed sculpts, I pretty much want to print that and paint it. So hopefully one day, if I can not be a moron and get that thing to work, then you might see me painting the Manticore in oils. However, I, I promise I will not thievery your color scheme. I promise that. So look at, I mean, this is just so much fun to lay out these nifty little colors like this. Now, a cooking stream. Well, it, now you did hear, gosh, maybe this was on, uh, oh, I was on uh, uh, Art Plushie's stream. I want to stream this Christmas, I want to stream the decorating of the of the Christmas cookies. Just look at the Instagram account. We'll go to around Christmas time. Look at the Instagram account. Or my Instagram page, whatever. You will see. You'll see Christmas cookies. And if someone finds that and, and they want to link it in the chat, feel free to do so. Uh, well, Gazmini, I think uh, you are going to have to be the, the mentor of the printing. I, I'm going to need mentors. So I will be counting on you. When when things go haywire and I've totally broken the thing, I'm going to be sending you desperate messages like, how do I fix this? Uh, let's see. Will this have a snow base? That's that's actually, believe it or not, that's why this is just acrylic right here. Because I was hoping that if I just have this in the oils, I could do the snow here. I was tempted to put some snow on him, but maybe I'll just do that after this part's dry. But I'm hoping if I can stay away from this with the oils to actually do the crushed glass snow on this thing right here. And he's on a square base, obviously, because Kings of War. Uh, let's see, Drax asked, do we do a gingerbread house? We didn't. I was, I've been campaigning for a gingerbread house for years. But we've actually, well, then I started campaigning for doing the nutmeg log recipe more than the gingerbread recipe. Because if you look at that Instagram thing and look at the Christmas cookies, you will notice that there are shapes that you don't find in cookie cutters, like B-29s, uh, Fokker Wolfs, uh, Messerschmitts, Crusader Tanks, Tiger Twos, Matildas. Yeah, you don't really have a lot of those. So I actually just take the dough and cut it into the shapes that I want because reasons. It, it's my gingerbread army, as I like to call it. So actually, if I was... Well, that's another reason why I'm not allowed to do a gingerbread house, because it would be something like Pavlov's house, or it would be one of the flak towers in Berlin, or it might be Barador. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. Can you imagine Adoras in gingerbread? A Christmas cookie sleepover. Well, anyone that, that does the Christmas cookie sleepover is also going to probably get put to work. Ah, you know what's missing here? Oh, no, it's not. Here we go. Jeez, I thought I forgot to put Thalo Green there. I did not. Oh, look at what difference that makes. Look at that. That's just a tiny touch of Thalo Green in there. We've been doing a lot of stuff that's reddish. 
the stuff that's facing towards the snow or where there's going to be snow I'm gonna give that a look at that look at that greenish tint and we're gonna go we're gonna double down on that greenish tint it's not gonna register as green it'll just register as another shade of blue uh, you could print them well yeah <laughs> I having the FDM printer too and the resin printer Oh, I want to print the Black Gate. I want to print Minas Tirith. I want to print Medjusel. I want to print Orthanc. I want to print the the Ammon Hen, Ammon Sewell. That the <laughs> you 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 laugh. You think I'm joking? I, I ain't joking about that. Because if I can ever figure out those those stupid printers. Well, and find the stuff that I need to actually be able to make prints. I will be a printing fiend. I will print anything that I can find. Now, let's see. Oh, Bethany is in the house. Uh, so, Bethany, I, I, uh, I was glad that the, what was it? Was the Artisan Guild lady, right? You were able to watch that because I put that up on YouTube. So, that's I'm I'm really glad that those at least you can watch those and and not have the internet do weird things to you, so I'm gonna continue doing that. So that is definitely part of the plan. This will be on YouTube because what two weeks from now, so I don't know July 10th or something like that. This won't be viewable on this anymore on the Twitch channel, but. It should be up on the YouTube channel by then. Oh, look at look how much fun we're having here with this. And we have not even gotten close to the later colors that we can add. However, I gotta say, I'm having a blast with this. So this is one of my usual green handle brushes, but look at oh, does it? Sh yeah, look at that. Look how nasty the back of it is. Why is it so nasty? Because I was using it to put uh, oxide paste on. Ba oh yeah, this is something I'm hoping maybe to do tomorrow. Is I'm gonna paint a little mural on this thing here. This is my newest army painting series. I just filmed this episode, and after this is done, it's gonna start uploading. So some of my sisters of battle here. So yeah, bases for that. Oh, here's some of the painted bases that I was working on. Come on. Yeah, actually, I like to be able to print out my own flaming skulls. That would be fun. So this was the latest uh, basing tutorial that I made here for the old Patreon page for the sisters. Very fun. Yeah, right. Let's go back to this. Uh, but yeah, I just literally slice this off with the here. Okay, let's let's do it. Where'd that brush go? So what I'm gonna do is. Let this down. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, not a super great shape right there. Let's see what we can do to... It's a 20 cent brush. Who the heck cares? What happens to it now? Okay. Cut this down a little more here. That's uh, relatively flat. Sometimes I just do this. Nice little haircut for this guy. So that, now, basic the same process that I did on this. Now let's see, the spool printer is more difficult to tune in than the risen printer. Oh, yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Let me see. More than happy to help. I guess Greg will be a good guy for that, too. Well, Greg already knows. Well, he knew. The first thing I told him is he's got to idiot-proof every file. Like, not just put the supports on there, but, like, literally make it something that a three-year-old could use. And he said, okay, I'll do that. Uh, let's see. Technically, there's more, a lot of more moving parts on the filament print. Oh, geez. You could just look at that thing. And it looks like a robot, like a, that that's gonna get up and start walking around. It, it looks like the Mars rover in some ways to me. 
and then there's a whole bag of additional parts and and cords or, or cables and stuff i'm like oh boy <laughs> yeah it, it's if it was a 24 7 work environment now it's going to be 10 times worse than that now I'm trying to learn these printers Spark my ganja. Well, thank you so much jerry or gary but i'm gonna go with jerry i will assume it's that but i can be corrected just say nope it's not that it's this and i will be sure to try to remember the correct way to pronounce as we throw out a little bit more of our green there. Look at that. This is just so much fun to be able to do this. You have no idea. Wow. Let's start to play with perhaps some lighter colors. However, however we're going to start to introduce a little bit of our white spirits. Let's get some lighter stuff going on. Resin printers are pretty simple. Yeah, that's uh, the Elegoo Mars is just, it's that little, it sort of looks like a popcorn maker, like a Jiffy Pop sort of thing. With that little red dome on it. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm not trying to be facetious, but it kind of looks a little bit like a popcorn maker. Oh, look at that. Look at the difference now. Yeah, that shows up real nice. Uh, Drax will hold off until they're almost as easy as paper printers. Oh man, what was it? The uh, seventy percent that you got, or was it? Uh, are you talking the heavy duty ninety plus percent stuff? Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, M. Kartsu, for that follow. Gandalf appreciates it too. Geez, I don't know if you want to mention that in a public space, people are going to show up at your house trying to break in just to steal your rubbing alcohol. I mean, I, I think, uh, well, heck, when I was looking for the, of course, I somehow lost the instruction manual for the stupid resin printer. So I went to just locate one to download. And yeah, <laughs> good grief. Everything on the Igloo said it's out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. No resin, no nothing. I mean, you can't get anything. It is all out of stock. Uh, Target only had 70%, but they had a full stock of it. Uh, I have a Mars Pro and a Sonic Mini. Both are dead easy to use. See, I basically, to me, that the 3D printing is going to be like the oils, right? What did I start out with? I started out with this. You know, your set of 10 as basic as you can get and really considered student grade and then I started to add things like you know the more exotics like the ultramarine violet here and our fluorescence and I'm, there, believe me I got others I'm, I'm eyeing some other colors that are gonna be much more dramatic uh, here in New Zealand it's pretty easy to get 99 percent yeah here it is uh, it would be probably easier to find well toilet paper is a lot easier to find now it's weird actually toilet paper is the cheapest thing in the darn store but yeah rubbing alcohol <laughs> it'd probably be 20 bucks for a, a two cups of it in our grocery store if it's even there. well it's not there it would be actually be in the the drug store next door to it now let's get some more of this green going while we're at it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, Technically, it has the Elegoo Mars. Yeah, I don't know why I kept calling it Igloo Mars. <laughs> I don't know why. That's just me being an idiot. Oh, well. What's new? But I definitely... Um, a pigeon... I, I Well, have you seen the, the 3D stuff that I already had? Now, this was not printed by me. But this is just a tiny portion of the train. Because there's a, there's a fountain that I've already done here. So tack on a fountain to all this stuff. And that that tower there, that that's like 14 inches tall. That is not the biggest printed terrain piece I have. I've got one that's taller than that. And it's almost as wide as those other two pieces of terrain and the tower combined. It's, yeah, that's going to be an entire table filled as we welcome in Trasherama. 
Um, let's see. Let me get back to my thing here. This trash asks, will I be doing any classes at the Virtual Reaper Con? I guess I'm not really going to be doing anything official at all because I asked if there was anything. Because I was just going to do virtual Fort Wapple, right? Basically day-long, night-long streams. And I asked them, well, so is there some kind of Discord thing, you know, that you want to set up so that people, maybe somebody else, could be painting with me or multi-stream? And basically their answer was, no, just stream like you normally would. And I went, okay, y you're sure? <laughs> because just tell me what to do to set up a Discord thing or, you know, that multi-stream software, whatever, and I, I can do multi-streams with people. I don't mind. But uh, I guess I'm just going to be streaming like I normally would during Virtual ReaperCon. So, yeah. <laughs> is what it is. But that uh, uh, that's still the idea. That's still the goal is to at least it be... It's sort of a class... <laughs> Now, let's go back to our darker stuff. Now that we got the smaller stuff, uh, sure beats graph paper, that's for sure. Now, what was the other thing that I was... Oh, here, let's mix a little touch of our Payne's Gray into that. Boy, I wish I had indigo. Oh, that's another color that I want to get is indigo blue. And I don't know if I... I don't think I even have Prussian blue, but I'm kind of making one here. That's the Payne's Gray mixed with the ultramarine and that's sort of giving me a little bit of a Prussian blue type of a color here um, just to making sure I haven't missed any nope haven't missed anything in the chat there but there, let's see there's a company well I just I know the person's name I don't he's got a Kickstarter I think it might still be going it's a lot of pirate themed stuff but they did a basically a Viking theme, and it it essentially looks like Rohan. I mean, it looks it, it's it's a little more Viking than Rohan, I gotta say. But it's Rohan enough that with even maybe a few simple modifications, it could look very Rohan. So I'm looking forward to that too. So much fun to be able to do these darker panels like this. You know, let's get some of that in here. I'm going to start thinning this down, though. I'm going to have to start to thin that down. It, basically, what I'm painting here is a bazillion completely uneven, awkwardly placed gemstones, which means I have to treat them as such. Kind of doing that dark to light sort of thing. So say we all. So say we all. Thank you so much. Oh, it's Tribulation. Thank you so much for the subscription. Here, we're going to eat those because those literally are sustenance. One more on the edge there. It gets chased away by the ice elemental. So what I, I try to do is to, to reward the folks that subscribe. I will send them a, a video link, one of my Patreon videos. Now, a lot of the folks that are watching, they're also on the Patreon page too, but it, it's something maybe that uh, kind of piggybacks off of a recent session or just things that I've talked about a lot. Some kind of a concept or some kind of helpful hint. Let, let's say I, I do a lot of freehand or something on a stream. I'll, you know what? I think I'll just send folks a freehand video here. So because it makes the it enhances the value of the stream. But uh, thanks again, Tribulation. I appreciate that. It, it, to me, it makes each of these little crazy well, sort of lessons a better lesson. Because yeah, we're we're talking and chatting and having fun. But I'm hoping that for some folks, this right here actually becomes a little valuable piece of information that they can use. 
because uh, well, if you're painting a whole army of these or a whole unit of these, I mean, wouldn't this be a really handy way? Because we've been at this for like 40 minutes. And believe me, this is definitely faster than if I was trying to paint this with acrylics. I would not be this far along. I would not be this far along by any stretch of the imagination. That's for sure. Here, let's, uh, again, we're going to clean this brush out very thoroughly here. I mean, that. look at that. I mean, that's like on the microscopic level we've cleaned that. I'm going to go in here, and we are just going to do some more aggressive placement of lighter tones and we're just going to place those tones we're not gonna blend any of that stuff yet we are just gonna place these guys here there hmm here here Definitely something right over there. Oh, that's a... Uh, well, now we... Speaking of Gondor, we have the identifying as Gondor. So say we all! So say we all! Oh, Corvus Oculum, thank you so much for the subscription. We'll break out with Peleus again because he's always hungry. Wow, he's got to capture all of those jumping out of the tray you know I've got a larger scale version of him that I'm gonna have to paint in oils because why not I know Kathy has another she has the 54 millimeter too and what should happen now is we start to introduce this lighter color you know it's just we're gonna keep taking our titanium white here we're just going to look at this popping into a few areas Somewhere, I could swear I bought some zinc white that I could maybe just fool around with because, well, I was telling Drax the other day that titanium white is really the only white that I've ever used for a lot of years. I, I told him <laughs> more specifically how long it was, but we'll just leave uh, we'll leave that information just in Drax's uh, stream there. You'll have to go back and watch one of his VODs to find out. Ah, so much fun this is. Wow. Yeah. I, d I can only hope that there is a point where something makes 3D printing this easy. Dang. Because if there is, that's going to be a very dangerous moment. That's going to be real dangerous because I'm going to be printing out so much freaking stuff. Here, let's do a do a little bit of our blending now. Just take some of that and scumble it and scrumble it along. Got ourselves a nice little panel right there. We'll just keep doing that. I think, oh well, yeah, we got some over here. Look at that. We got this one over here. We got this weird crazy line. We don't want a weird crazy line. What we want is a smooth blend and of course like an idiot I don't have those wolfen guys that we were working on the one that has the, the smooth cloak and everything so yeah I don't know where that went however we're starting to get some we're starting to get some nice ice flavored stuff going on here oh, oh jinxed in the house definitely another person you need to give a follow because hey 2d art and skulls and miniatures wood burning i mean you name it jinx does it all so definitely go check her out oh and uh, congratulations on another successful uh, sale there at the the gallery so that's really cool that that's been working out Here, let's uh get some more of this white position here and it, it's really we're just positioning it there so that we can blend it with other stuff later i'm gonna let that blend with some of our green yeah so much fun Ooh, let's uh let's have some fun over here with some white 
and our ultramarine blue here. So that's a very, look at that different type of blue. It's so different from all the other, look at how different it is from that green. Darker, entirely different. Uh, to, look at that. It almost looks purple by comparison right there. I'm looking, I want to see just what my color is set to. So I'm going to turn up my brightness a pinch. I'm going to do this. So now he's black and white. So you can see we're starting to get the, the, the shading there. Starting to look like those facets. Bring back our color there. Boom. Uh, let's see. Uh, a local friend gave you some lead white. Yeah, now I did actually... I don't know where, where it is. Is this it? Oh, it's already getting smushed. But I'm going to try and get a few of these just to, because people keep asking me about them. And I basically say, I don't know. I've never used them. So I'm going to try some of these. They're, like I said, it's, I don't really want to be getting a whole new line of oil paint that I may never use when I've got, well, enough oil paint to last me a lifetime already. We're going to get some more of our ultramarine right here. Look at that. Did that just kind of start to blend in there with that? Then we need to do a similar thing right there. So again, another light to dark panel. And just... Uh, do this a bazillion times with acrylics. It will it will drive you insane. Quite literally insane. How do you think I got the way I am now? I'll just blame it on painting a bazillion of these crazy stupid ice panels in acrylics. Which dry and don't let you do fun things like, I don't know, that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because I don't think, it, I probably haven't touched that panel in probably 30 minutes or so. And it just let me do that. I mean, it is criminally easy. Dang. I'm going to go back in with a few more darks now. And by darks, I mean Payne's Gray, this time mixed with... I was about a little bit of the thalo blue there. So I'm going to clean this brush again. Like I said, I mean, this is super duper cleaning right here. I mean, look at how thorough that is. I mean, that is just, that's intensive cleaning. And we'll get some, a couple of darks. We've had a lot of the, we're introducing a lot of lighter tones. We've got to make sure we don't lose track of these darker tones as well and remember actually gee whiz uh, most of you probably weren't here when I did the initial that little pre-wash type thing on there man it was the first time I'd ever used basically anything except some kind of earth tone or browns or whatever so that Hello, was pretty wild spark my ganja <laughs> Uh, Moonshine, thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. Moonshine, the Leo cat. Oh, look at this. Here, let's get uh, just a couple of darks there. Let's see what we can do here. There. Let's get to another round of darks up over here, too. Having so much fun with this. Ah, uh, yes. Ooh, gee. We need some right here. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Magmaron, thank you so much for the foul. That is appreciated. That uh, is appreciated. Gandalf obviously appreciates it too. Getting that gun just sparked. Who doesn't want that? Look at, there we go. Again, another quick, easy, 
And that's, we hadn't actually blended anything, we just dropped a color there. Now if you want to actually get into a little more blending, we can do that. So there we got our, these are some of the, some of the whites that we added here, and we'll just blend those together with what's already there. Look at that. Let's do a couple more of these. Calvadia in the house, how are you doing? We're, we're having fun with the oils again. And we're especially having fun because this is one that I've painted before in acrylics. And, geez, I could probably paint three of these in oils in the time it took me to paint the one in acrylics. And this will have vastly smoother blends. It'll have more colors on it. Basically more everything. Pretty much more of everything. Here, let's get the touch of this essentially a Prussian blue that we made. Just mixing a little bit of the Payne's gray, which is a really dark, dark bluish gray. Mixing it with a little bit of their our thalo blue. Boom, right there. Some of that over here too. As everywhere we do this, we just instantaneously get another little facet in our icy gemstone. And there's really no other way to kind of think about it. It's just a it's like a collection of cut gemstones. Ooh, we need something, but not quite that dark. Not quite that dark. I'm going to mess around with a little bit of cerulean blue here. So we're just going to toss you over here. Keeping in mind that the cerulean blue is, it's more opaque than all the other ones. Am I, I'm, I'm in the right spot here. And you wouldn't think it's that dark, but it actually is, it's somewhat dark. But again, also opaque, so it will cover more. Now I also, here, I need to... There's a thing we want to blend over there. We're just going to grab ourselves our blending brush like you do. There we go. Touch of that over here. And the other nice thing too is once this stuff has been able to sit for a little while, I can go back in again and really do some additional smoothing here. Because I know some people say, like, why do I have all these? I can see all these brush strokes in it. I say, well, how long did you wait to do your, your blending after you put the paint on there? So I did it right away. That is, that's one of the reasons why that happens. Sometimes you've got to be patient and not be hasty. Now we need to back here. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on. This is maybe where we're going to add a little bit of our titanium white to our cerulean blue. And let's get in here. Essentially add some middle tones to this, not lights, but some middle tones. Also want to get some green in there too. So Thalo green. One shot right there. And that little bit of green is going to set up the color contrast that we talk about all the time. There's value contrast, and we did this, and we did the whole black and white thing on it. Look at that. This is the other thing that oils make a lot easier. Blending all this junk with acrylics where it's that hard to get a brush down in there, that could be painful. But here, I hold them upside down. I let the wet paint blend into the wet paint. I don't have to worry about that whole, oh my gosh, trying to not glue his arm on. With the oils, you can do way less of that 
sub-assembly type stuff and just say, you know what, the heck with it. I'm just going to glue the arms onto this thing. I don't care. Yeah, well, this uh, I guess there's uh, a lot of folks that they, they don't mind seeing something cold right now because it's getting to be a little bit toasty in a lot of places. Yeah, we're going to go with some some more of the green right here. Yeah. And that's right next to a reddish-blue panel. So those two panels, there's not much in the way of light and dark that's different. What is different is that one has a greenish tint, the other one has a reddish tint to it. I think I've done, I know way back in 2013, 14, whatever, when I was doing the painting pyramid stuff, I filmed a video on specifically on colors like red, blue, yellow, I even did a gray. I did browns. No, I did a greens, too. And the whole idea behind that was to show the, the vast range of just reds and, and yellows. Just yellows that looked like orange, yellows that looked like brown. And I've done things that were sort of like that. Maybe I need to do more videos like those because what I started out doing was was swatches so I might have to do some more videos like that that might be helpful for folks here let's to let's get in with some more of our whites here and I've been slowly refilling some of my oils I think I've refilled about five of them so far and that was actually my the, the thing I was wondering, how difficult would it be to refill the oil containers? Would I have to just basically make a new container? And they've actually been pretty darn easy to refill. So, yay, that's good. I'll look at it again. That's a, a liner brush that I'm using like a tiny filbert brush. That's not really something that most folks do. But we do that here. We do that here in Wampleville. And as we start to get some of these edges kind of drawn out now in, in this, uh, with these hard edges going, that's really then going to encourage that idea that this is some kind of hard, icy cut surface. Let's do that some more. Let's see. It's uh, Chrysalids. How are you doing? Uh, let's see, Covey, I'd be super interested in the color contrast vids. Yeah, so what I, I try and always do here is stuff like this, where we've got our figure out here, and we go zoink, and we take away the color. I, w I didn't have this ability then. I did not have this ability back then. And the idea is you, you can see where there is plenty of shading, but what now when you bring that color back in, you start to see where there's greens, reds. It's still blue. It's still blue, but it's more than just a blue. I'm going to go back to some of the darker stuff again here. Where are we at? Because, yeah, I want to get a couple of these panels darker there. I, I see nothing but mid-tone here that calls for some dark there I see the same thing happening here here let's get some dark in here too and it is just it's so insanely easy to do that now let's get a little bit of our ultramarine blue mixed with the Payne's gray, slightly different darker blue. There we go. I want some right here. Right there is good. This does not have, to me, enough shape there, so we're going to just create something. Want some more here? Oh yeah, over here there is nothing going on. 
just a few quick brush strokes all of a sudden same thing here there was nothing a couple quick brush strokes we got at least some kind of shading happening there we got more instances here where we need more shading going on a lot of these panels on the underside also need some dark have not had to go into the white spirits to thin this stuff down quite so much part of it is just because the nature of these particular blue colors well being salo blue ultramarine blue i don't want to say they're naturally just thinner but they kind of are mostly when you see me work with all those earth tones those tend to be just more opaque a little bit thicker and sometimes it takes more of the white spirits to get those to, to flow and to stick on each other a little bit better. i look up there. Oh, we got the... Uh, <laughs> zoink. That is, uh, I don't know how that uh, word entered the lexicon, but it just seems to have. That That's like the official sound when things go black and white. Warren here, I'm going to give me something to drink. One second. So sorry about that. Now, I did actually add a couple of new, well, new old pictures to the gallery. So I brought these back in. And actually, one of these is, uh, none of these were painted. One of these was painted in oils. Uh, okay, so, not our Draco guy. One of these was painted in oil. They're the Kitsune. That's that's why I want to have this up. When Kitsune comes into the room, somebody's got to remind me to show him the Kitsune. Uh, here we go. So this guy on the lower right-hand corner, he was painted in oils. And actually, Jamie on the left, he was painted in the, in the metallic paints. Oh, and Necrons here. So, you know, new Necrons coming out. Those are actually painted in metallics with object source lighting. That's, uh, that's another one of the patreon series but with the new necrons what i want to do is i want to see if i can do the same thing in oils because i've got the mig ammo metallic oils so i really 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 want to try something like this i think that will be super fun with those new necrons so there's plans well that and the osiarchs too you know let's do that that had a chance to sit there for a bit gonna blend it Now I'm going to take my ear. I'm going to get my phthalo blue over here. A little more. Okay. Just looking to get some more stuff down in, in these shapes. Like, there's another one here that's got no paint on it. This one doesn't have a whole lot of shading. Let's change just more of a color that was... Oh, look at this. This has had nothing added to it since the start. A little something here. Again, this is so much easier. Just a brush stroke. Because it's blending by itself. I just... I could not do that before. I'm going to add a little bit of the titanium white to this. That was just like impossible with the acrylics. So to get all the way down in there and actually have any kind of real shading. I mean like that. Like here. Okay. There's not just shading. There's going to be some blending there. All along those areas. So we'll just here get rid of some of the paint out of that brush. Go back into these shapes and smooth that out. It can go even a little bit lighter here. It was just so painful to deal with all this stuff in acrylics with oils. Good grief. 
criminally easy if there's such a thing. I feel like there's somebody's going to break down the door and say, no, that's a violation. That is too easy. That is officially too easy. We cannot allow it to be that easy. Hashtag too easy. And now I'm going to just uh, go into my, this is my Ultramarine Blue Mix over here. We've been doing a lot of stuff with our greenish blues. Now we're going to get into basically a reddish blue here. We'll throw this in several places. Oh, like up there and over there. I see a couple more areas here that have just not a whole lot of anything going on. What about here? I can only literally see the reflection of the paint. Like there's there's a paint being added there and it's making it a little bit shiny. I couldn't even see the color, but I know what color I'm actually using. Now it's interesting here, if I'm going to have all that snow down there, I can't necessarily just have only darker tones down here. So that's going to make it interesting. I hope that actually this, uh, you can see these panels that I'm painting right now. Now we're going to flip the other way here. We're going to grab some of our Payne's Gray. Ultramarine blue. We'll go back to our darker stuff here. Make some darks on these panels. Hmm. So oh yeah. Definitely there. I am surprised at how little white spritz have had to add to this to get paint to stick now that again that's it could be a, it has as much to do with the properties of the the different blues that I'm using than it is like the figure itself now of course this is a little bit different figure than we normally paint he's in some ways he's almost more mechanical than organic so that could have something to do with it too okay see this right here just going to add a touch of that. Blending brush. Poof. I mean, that's it. That's all it needed. That's all that it took right there. Adjustment made and done with. Now, I'm going to get some, some... Let's see if I've got any phthalo green left here. This is uh, one of the other, yeah, this is another one that I'm going to have to refill here because this one's virtually empty. So I'm just going to see if I can't get what's in my cap, get that on the palette. So that one's, uh, that needs to be refilled. Uh, I'm fairly certain uh, the culprit that made us run out of it, uh, where are you? It has to have been, where did you go? Where's my... But let's see. Oh, uh, Tsuga, what brand of oil paints are these? These are basically all Windsor Newton at this point. Here, let's go grab some of these. So this is some of them here. This was the, the first set that I got four years ago. Oh, Suicide Printy, how are you doing? I just saw you in, uh, in uh, Thunderdome stream, I do believe. But since then... I've added some more. This is actually one of my favorites right here, especially for some of my initial glazing on the figures. And then where is is this my my Terra Rosa here? So we've gone we've gotten some of the more fun colors like this. And added now this is a little bit more of a pricey one here. Adding stuff like the cerulean blue. I still gotta get a cobalt blue. But I have added some other things like this. So my fluorescent orange here, that's from Marion Street. And the fluorescent green here. Ah, so I was right. Okay, now here is another example of where we use the 
This was just another stream a couple nights ago. So we're using the fluorescent green on that Army of the Dead there to do a little bit of a glow on him. He was very fun. Where are we at? Oh, yeah, we need to get ourselves a bit of dark there. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Sir Lunkintus, thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. And obviously Gandalf appreciates it too. Gandalf does appreciate that. So again, this is the, I'll show you the difference here between. So yes, this first number does mean a lot. One's a zero, one's a quadruple zero. But this second number here, this 222 two, two versus 111, one, one, and these are all the Cotmans, also Windsor Newton. I mean, you just see the difference here that in a liner brush. And I was using this liner brush here a whole lot painting this. So this was a tutorial video that I was filming earlier today. It's one of my new army painting series. And uh, most of the, all of the filigree and the, the typeface and such that was done with the liner brush so here's a, another one I don't think I showed this one yet come on there we go so again just a little bit of fun with marble and freehand again part of one of my new painting series that was from episode one that's gonna start uploading as soon as we're done here And uh, hopefully that uh, successfully uploads overnight because it was a longer video than I thought it was going to be, that's for sure. So I'm going to actually be painting some more of those bases here on the stream as well. This is another thing. Look at this. Yes, it can be a point, but it can also be a filbert brush. Look at that. It's, it's virtually two brushes in one. Let's do some more there. To add some more here. And we haven't gone in to do any of this stuff yet. So that is also going to make a difference. However, we're we're waiting on that. We're going to wait on that. You can see uh, the feathered brush stroke that we're using here. I think that's the other thing that I see folks doing with the oils is the application is a bit heavier because, well, you're used to acrylics, so they're kind of giving it more of an acrylic application, very heavy. And with oils, you want to, everything about it has to actually be a bit lighter, a bit more delicate. Like here. Okay, so let's... Uh, Grab some of this green over here. It's a lighter green. And look at we got a nice get filbert shape. Boom. One panel there. This has nothing going on. There is not a single shred of shading going on here. But now we got a couple of things going. We got shading. And we got color contrast because one panel has a greenish tint. The other panel more of a blue. We will do that here. We will do that here too. Some of that here. Let's go even a little bit lighter. So this one here. So I know it's a little bit blocked for you, but I, I got some green that was thrown in there. Some more over here too. This panel needs something. I'm going to go a little touch lighter on it now. Oh, Jinx Dart has to head out. Well, uh, hopefully, you used, so tomorrow you'll still be doing your usual late night Friday stream. Right, well, for me, late night Friday stream. I know you were mentioning there might be a little switch in the schedule at some point, but I'll try and catch you tomorrow. So see you then. Oh, geez, let's... Uh, Let's get some difference here, too. Yes. 
Because basically every time I turn around here, I go, oh, look, there's a panel that I didn't hit yet. And it's so easy to just drop a blend in on that thing. Whereas with acrylics, it would be like, oh, okay, I'll get in some mid-tone here, then I'll try and get some lighter color. And it was like starting over again a thousand times. But here with the oils, it's more like I'm just, I just keep adding instead of I'm constantly starting over. That That's about the only way I can describe it. With, with the acrylics, it felt like every single one of these stupid little panels, I was starting over from scratch again. Yeah, I think I can actually get a little closer on this baby. Especially once I start to do some of the finer lines and that sort of thing. All right, we just, uh, this is an hour and ten minutes in-ish. Oh, let's see, Suga, and I hope it is uh, Suga, or Suga, uh, you know, kind of at that uh, almost a Z-ish type sound there. Let me know if that is correct. Uh, I used to paint with oil on canvas back in college. For whatever reason, I haven't taken many chances with the oils on minis. Uh, nice to see the, yeah, it's, uh, I, I just, I happened to see a Facebook Live years ago, and, and someone was painting. Uh, there's a T35, and they were using Windsor Newton oils. I I'd seen the MIG ammo stuff. I obviously got the AK Interactive stuff, too. And I'd see people using those, but it was basically for weathering. This person, this artist, was painting the vehicle with them. He was shading them. He was, he was doing what I'm doing here. And I said, wait a minute. I, too, have oil paints. I too wish to paint miniatures with oils and I gave it a shot and over the years it has expanded further and further what I thought could be done with it to now I realize I can do not just anything with it but more things with it so here is a kind of a more extreme example if I can f ah here it is boom so that was done with oils using the same kind of brushes techniques that you see here that is a gigantic bust. That thing is half the size of a human head, and it's got seashells on it, or like Nautilus shells. So that is kind of the extreme that you can do with oils. And we'll show you here. Ah, here we go. So this is another painted in oils right here. It made all of this blending, especially on the back. So look at what we got here, that thalo green. We got a much more muted green up here, but then we got this magenta, and all this blending made so much easier with the oils. And I've got here a unit where's my Dothraki unit. We'll see if we can find them. Give me one second. Boom. So those were all painted in oils. Oh, thanks, Suicide Printy. I appreciate that. Uh, you can go. Good luck at me with a Hobby Lobby gift card worth the supplies. Yes. Oh, I, I love Hobby Lobby gift cards. Yes, indeed. And actually, the base there, that was uh, that was painted with weathering powders and rubbing alcohol, believe it or not. it's Oh, it's Karu. How are you doing? Back in the house. And, well, and sometimes just the miniatures themselves, right? Okay. So these are just bones miniatures right here. Boom. Those are all bones. Bones, bones, bones. All that's bones. But uh, you can do so much more with these things. I, I don't know. I guess it just uh, sometimes it, it makes me a little sad because people would just why well, you can't do that with this or you can't do it with that. And I say, well, you 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 can. I, the conventional wisdom says you can't, but conventional wisdom has a tendency to be not so smart for whatever reason look at this taking what's normally a very sharp pointy brush now we're starting to get into this this phase here right when we start to add some of these nice sharp little lines that's going to make a big difference on some of these panels here like down here along here. 
going to get a much more icy look. Right now we've got we're start, we got those panels relatively shaded. Now we want to go in here and start to carve in some lighter stuff. So where's my... I'm just going to chuck out some more white here. So that sound is the agitator. Uh, let's see. Uh, tired insomnia sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, Unfortunately, insomnia. People keep the, they keep thinking that I have insomnia. No, I, I don't. I could practically fall asleep right now. I have fallen asleep while exercising. I could do that right now if I wanted to. It just there's just a lot of stuff that has to be done, unfortunately, because I would love to be sleeping. But I do feel sorry for the folks where it's just they want to sleep, but they they can't get themselves to, or stay asleep. So I, I uh, and gridlock cysts also, same thing. I just I know a lot of folks that that just uh, that just sort of gets them. And that that can't be an easy thing, that's for sure. Look at that. See what that does. We just been we've been waiting on that for a while. Now this is thinned down. I have to say, that has definitely been thinned down. I think it's going to make a big old difference over here for sure. Yes, indeed. Look at that. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, die openers. Uh, what kind of lazy exercises are you doing that you fall asleep? Uh, actually, it's kind of dangerous because I have 20-pound iron weights strapped to my legs. And because I'm hunched over doing this... Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Oh, thanks, Suga. I appreciate that. Uh, I need to basically stretch out my back and everything. So I do these a series of these different stretches on an exercise mat. And after about... 440 reps of these things with 20 pounds of weights on my legs and it, it's happening at kind of the end of the day so I'm pretty exhausted and I'm basically laying on a cold basement floor on an exercise mat that has way more holes in it than it has stuffing and in the winter time it's particularly brutal because I'll literally wake up shivering an hour later or something like that and that comes after running about two and a half miles or so with 10 pound weights strapped to my arms. But that is the only way that I can just not, because again, you're, you're hunched over doing this for hours on end. It's the only way I can kind of uh, uncork the pretzel uh, let's say coffee slammers, getting somewhere between four and eight hours of sleep every four hours. That is definitely, and sometimes when you get, what is that, basically too tired to sleep. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the follow, Mtellas. It's appreciated. It is definitely appreciated. Let's get the... Uh... Look at this. We can do some more in the way of our lines, but not just lines. And look at this. See how we just cut that a little bit right there? Same thing here. This is, uh, I've been anxious to see something like this on him too, because we, again, we had the shading there, we had some individual panels. But now when you see this, th this is kind of that little the signal to the eye to believe, oh, yeah, that's some kind of ice shard or something like that. But we have a genuine vision in the house. Uh, welcome in, genuine vision. Uh, if you have not already, well, pff, everybody here is already following genuine vision. But if you're not, or check if Twitch has unfollowed you, go follow genuine vision. Welcome. We're using the oils here. We're just having some fun. This is uh, an hour and 20-ish minutes in. And this is, like I said, I could paint three of these 
with oils because I painted one of these in acrylics and I know for a fact that I could paint at least two and a half or three of these in the same time it would take me to paint one with acrylics. It's just insane the speed and efficiency this allows. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Kaiser Zuza, thank you so much for the follow and a fantastic screen name as well. Tell him, tell us, yeah, I I wasn't doing this until well, I was I did a first couple of streams in February, a couple in March. But when I tried doing a YouTube Live in early April, and it killed my stream, saying that it violated community standards, and I, was, I was like painting something like this in blue. I'm like, okay, that's it. And that's when I just went to Twitch, and I have not come back since because, well, Twitch has way more chat stuff going YouTube has virtually no chat stuff going on. Twitch has all kinds of chat stuff going on. Well, look at that. That is Hyperface Studios with the raid. We'll welcome in the raiders here. And obviously, give Hyperface a follow. I usually I usually end up uh, just sending messages back and forth, and I think it's an Art Plushie stream. Uh, let's see. Crew only has been streaming for just over a week. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow, WJ. So for the folks that are coming in hot and heavy new on the new side here, this is uh, Ice Elemental. It's from Mantic Games. It's actually a resin figure. And we are using my, my little premixed oils on this here. So we got Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Blue, little Payne's Gray, Thalo Blue, little Thalo Green here and there. And it quite literally is just oil paints. So where's my here's my cerulean blue. So it's quite your regular standard oil paint there, mixed with some high quality white spirits. And each one of these, it's a different percentage. But once you get that percentage down, you have yourself over here. This is basically miniature paint consistency. When it comes out of this container. It's just like miniature paint. And thanks again, Hyperphase. I appreciate it. So now we get to do the fun part. But we've what we've been doing is taking different colors of blue. See, we got different greens in there. But now we're just taking some of our thin down. And again, we're using that same white spirits to thin it down more. But here, let's take a couple of these panels here, and then you can see, get an idea of what it is that we're doing. This is all over wet oil paint, by the way. All of this paint is wet. If I were to take a makeup sponge, I could quite literally take every spot of paint off of this thing. And look at this, we can put in a couple of those fun little lines, right, that you see folks doing on shards of ice. Let's do some of that over here. Again, we've been having some fun in this area with it. Now we're going to do some more over here. So Hyperface, how was, how was your stream? Hopefully that went uh, that went well. Sorry that I didn't get a chance to catch it. I was, well, filming a video for most of the day and evening. And then I went directly into this. So hopefully you had a successful stream too. And just, well, I love what you can do with these oils. Again, this is all wet oil paint right here. It is all very much wet oils. And if I don't like something, you know, let's say we go like, oh, we didn't want that. I've got any number of brushes here that I can use to just blend that right out. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Scumblet, real quick. It's gone as we have a shibi. If I have pronounced that correctly, hopefully I have. Thank you so much for the follow. And I've been stressing how I, I painted one of these in acrylics sometime last year. It took me at least, let's see, we're an hour and 30 minutes into this. 
this stage right here probably would have taken close to three hours with the acrylics. That is not kidding. I am not joking there. I am dead serious about that. Because the ability to just keep blending and, and such. Look at this. Okay. We can kind of give it a little bit of that. Those little streaks that you kind of do. Now here, we need more some kind of differential there. We don't have much of a differential. I am going to take some of my cerulean blue here, thin it down just a pinch. One of these has to be lighter than the other. I'm going to say this. So I'm going to throw that paint there. I'm going to take a paper towel. I'm just going to wipe that paint off the brush. Uh, let's see, work done some more Bot Wars Mini. And I don't think I'll be able to top the water base I did for the previous one. Yeah, that was pretty darn amazing. Look at that. See that little blending we just did right there? Now, again, clean off that brush a bit. Look what, look what I'm targeting right up in here. This this space. Bam. Some blending. It's the, it's the magic of oils. I'm telling you. And this is really the first time I've tried something like this with the oils where I started out my initial kind of pre-glaze work was just a, a bunch of different shades of blue. Hadn't really done that before. Now here we, we obviously need to get this edge. And look at that. Since the oils again are thinner than water it's so easy to get these nice and thin, freehand and such. So much easier. Look at that. Boom. Now, I was, and I've been showing these. This was the tutorial that I was filming earlier. It was the first part of a new tutorial series on my Sisters of Battle. So I was doing the basing stage of this. And I've got, I'm going to be painting some more bases on a stream because I got so many bases to paint but there you got your marble there we've got obviously some fiery stuff because you know sisters and this is one of my little finished color examples right here so let's let's go back and do some more of our our fun little lines here and find some of these smaller shapes Yeah, if you go back and watch the beginning of this, you'll see the the more grubby phase where we're literally just slapping paint all over the place. This is the much more refined stage, to say the least. So over here we got that. That's not a very interesting shape there. I got to do something with that. So I'm going to take actually some ultramarine blue over here. Let's see what we can do to make this more interesting. See what, uh, this thing right over here. There we go. And oh look. I just blend that. Put some over here too. So that looks a whole lot more interesting than what was there, which was basically nothing. Now we got some separation between these two panels without endlessly trying to lighten that one. Sometimes adding dark is actually much better than just slapping on more light. Because if you just keep chucking white on there, well, white's not really a f much of a fantabulous thing to look at. The ultramarine blue was way more fun to look at. Now what I also need to do I need to do that uh, some dark versions of these lines too. I'm gonna need to do some of that. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh, Karoo, sorry about that. Sorry to hear that. That's a May 19th. That is definitely that is a tough thing to get over, no matter how long it has been. Uh, let's see. Ah, yeah, that is, well, we just had a close friend of ours that we've known about, well, actually, about 
that time there and that night I know I did a live stream because I tend to have just crazy nightmarish type dreams well kind of all the time anyways but I did not want any unusual dreams so I basically stayed up all night <laughs> I know yours is is not self-inflicted yours is just like it just happens you don't want it to but I do I hope that uh, well time doesn't really heal wounds it just kind of puts scabs and band-aids on them but I suppose even a scab or a band-aid is better than just the open type wound so actually I, I don't know I hope that in some crazy silly way just kind of absorbing yourself and 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 hobby stuff like this as inane as it sounds maybe it just kind of some kind of creative thing comes along just a, a something to give the mind another thing to maybe process instead of processing the the same ugly things over and over again I think that was the other reason why I did that that stream was because you didn't want to be processing certain things you'd rather process other stuff and that definitely did the trick I have to say because I know Kathy got the news of her thing basically about 30 seconds before she was gonna go live and that was why she was not live on Tuesday Uh, let's see, hyperphase, uh, did they restart footy? Because I got, I got some Facebook posts from, from Western Bulldog stuff, and they were talking debutantes. And I'm like, debutante, that means, are they actually playing games again? So I'll, I've, I hope I haven't been missing games. And, well, if I have been, I'm hoping that the Bulldogs are not at the bottom of the ladder already. Uh, let's see, getting into miniatures, something new and different. It is, it can be very challenging, of course. You know, when we first got into miniatures, there were not that many companies, like not that many companies. And you sure as heck didn't have all the tools that are there now. So you're, you're sort of entering literally at a golden age of miniatures. So I'm I'm thinking that uh, there should be some fun and interesting things for you to discover as as you kind of introduce yourself to this. Now, of course, we've talked about that the oils is kind of a <laughs> this is a much newer thing, and well, really outside of Mig Ammo and AK Interactive, those are the only companies that make paints that are supposed to be intended for what I'm doing right now so here's your this is another thing that got me started with the mixing of the oils on my own because I do love these it's just the container well there's not much in there and the containers do get a little wonky after a while oh, so my dad six years ago and grandma in March and they were the two that got me into miniature painting yeah, for me, the one of the reasons why I do a lot of the teaching is because, well, but I was 18 in art school, and my daddy just died of a heart attack while I was at school, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to stay in school, and the family made sacrifices and such, and ever since then it's one of the reasons why I do so much teaching is because well they the, the sacrifices were made they have to be have made for more noble a cause than for me just to have a job so that is one of the reasons why I try to do as much teaching as I do now look at this we need to get some darker stuff here like that now Thalo blue. Oh, let's do some of this Thalo green here. I haven't used Thalo green in a while. I'm going to just pop this into here. 
And we're going to blend this in here. Look at that. So that was just like practically white, had nothing going on. Now there's a little something going on, but also not too dark. Not too dark. Oh, and let me see. What am I? I want to get caught up here. Uh, I used to do HO railroading back in my youth. Actually, what got me, believe it or not, it was model railroading. Uh, I was with my brothers, and actually, well, one of my brothers, he passed away a few years ago. And that's the, the thing that he and I did that was my favorite thing together. Because he didn't, he was moved out of the house long before, um, practically before I was even born. So we did uh, the model railroading stuff basically at holidays, and I guess that kind of that put and it was uh, S scale. It was the very first S scale. It was American Flyer. That's what it was. The very first non third rail type of uh, railroading stuff. Oh, Valandar the Red in the house. Another person you need to follow as we're going to start to add some darker lines in here now. That's the Payne's Gray, if you're wanting, mixed with a little bit of the Ultramarine Blue. Also thin down with our White Spirits. Oh, I see people complaining for not being able to find a figure for their three-horned tiefling bard wearing a kilt with a doublet. Oh, my gosh. Well... Jeez, I remember when we discovered Reaper miniatures back around 2000, 2001, and there was a lot of stuff even then. And think of how many thousands of miniatures they've done since. Not brush for hire has rust mustered the Rohirrim. So the Rohirrim's going to make an appearance, and these are oil painted Rohirrim. More Rohirrim. So again, another. This was one of the very first uh, streams that I did on Twitch, and yes, that's freehand there. It's freehand there, all in oils. Uh, let's see. Oh, definitely in the air leotard. I mean, come on. That full, full air leotard right now. No, <laughs> I exercise in my air leotard. Those twenty-pound weights. That's all I'm wearing. Just let that particular vision talk about not nobody's going to go to sleep tonight because they're not going to want to be dreaming about that. Oh, let's get some more. That, again, we're thinning this down. It's the Payne's Gray. It's a little bit of our ultramarine blue. Still got to get me some indigo. That would be a... I haven't had that color since watercolor days. Oh, let's see. It's been over 25 years now. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, confiscates uh, Brush for Hire's Marmite. Uh, let's see. Oh, Juntalus the Golem looks like it's a Borderlands 2. This is, uh, it's from Mantic Miniature, or Mantic Games, sorry. And it's, well, you can use it for Kings of War, obviously, but then there's their, it's the Vanguard. I think it's called, uh, well, they got some of their frost people stuff, things. Oh, Vegemite. Oh, my goodness. I've heard, uh, I've, I've seen people trying that on, on YouTube videos, and it gives them a mighty squirrely look on their face when they haven't tried it before. Oh, let's see. The old Wizards of the Coast reboots of Chainmail Miniatures. Oh, my gosh. We had some of those. The metal miniatures, right? We still have some of those. I think actually Kathy might have painted one of those last year. One of those really old original miniatures. So here we can look at this. This is dirt, and this definitely thinned down, right? So we're almost doing a little bit of a, like a semi glaze right there. That's wet oils glazed on top of wet oils right there. Yes, you can do that. Now, for folks that want to see some some of the old 2D, I finally have some 2D art pictures here. So that is in watercolors right there on a hot press watercolor board. I also have painted that wolf on drum several times. 
This is actually going to be something I'm going to just sculpt kind of the old-fashioned way with some epoxy sculpt here. Jakar and Londo. I mean, who wouldn't want sculpting Jakar and Londo busts that we can paint on stream? And here's another example. So this is in pastels. When I would talk about yellows, right, and I have greens and oranges and all that in the yellows, there's an example. Do you see anything in there that's like just classic yellow? You'll see. Look at that. There's like a million different colors in there. So that, that's uh, that's taking you in the way back machine. I'm going to add some more of those. I'm going to add some space scapes and other things too. So you can kind of get an idea why it is that I keep kind of pounding you with the same the same ideas over and over again. And, it's, uh, and now that, that pastel goes all the way back to art school. Oh, I got a knoll with an axe kicking around. Oh, we found one of those. And oh, a knoll that we had gotten. I think it was going to be for a Blood Bowl team. And actually, Kathy, I think she put a base on that now. She made a base for it. So again, now that we, we did some of those lighter colors, I'm going to go back in here with some of these darks, and we're going to reinforce some of these shapes, make them more interesting. Again, Payne's Gray mixed with some of the Ultramarine Blue. I'll probably do some Payne's Gray mixed with the Thalo Blue. Oh, here's another example. So nothing going on right there. That is just, there is not much color there. I'm going to take some of that Thalo Green. Get this on screen for you. Now there's a little more color right there. Gonna put some more here Hello, too. Little hobbits, spark my ganja. As we welcome in the fish sausage, that would be a unique uh, food item right there. I know we, we were talking burritos earlier, but a fish. Well, I mean, it uh, would. I guess it would be nutritious. Might have less sodium in it too. And and sorry to be uh, a. <laughs> You come in and we start talking about food, but uh, it is 3.58 in the morning here, and I'm already, I'm thinking food already. Now, yeah, let's get some more of our reflected light down here. If we're going to have that snow and everything else, let's get some reflected light here. And yes, I'm kind of focusing on that phthalo green mixed with the white here. Look at that how easy it was to, to blend that panel. And this one here also needs to be lighter. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get rid of a lot of the paint that was on there. And we're just gonna march that right up there. A nice smooth blend, boom, no problem. Oh, let's see, the fish, uh, holy balls. That, oh, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Oh, and we got a lady bee in the house. A lady bee in the house. Now I want to do uh, cerulean blue here, and we're targeting this because that's a little bit soft, not much in the way of details. A little less soft. We're gonna go back to our thalo blue. Thinning that down. Oh, let me see. We've got, uh, so it's 10 a.m. in the U.K. It's, yep, six hours ahead of us. Probably 11 in Germany and Denmark if we see a snowy act in here. Uh, 4 a.m. in the midst. Well, that's 4 a.m. here, too. And I think we're we're pretty much caught up on everybody as we're going to get do some glazing here. So right there, see that? Look at that. It is a wet glaze. Literally glazed wet oils onto wet oils there. You can do it. You definitely can do that. Oh, let's let's get ourselves some. We need to define some of these shapes a little better. There we go. Same here. Okay. 
I'm, I'm hoping that I get a chance to do the snow stuff on this, the, the crushed glass snow. I just hope it's easy enough for me to reach. I think it's in the place that it's normally supposed to be. Now we're just going to, again, taking some of these, these thinner titanium white. Let's get some more of that thinned down. Just using that white spirits again. But I'm really liking this. I've gotten so used to the palette sitting over here instead of literally right here. I don't know if I can actually go back. I don't think so. And it was all done so that I could do bigger stuff. Like the bust, that was the first time that I actually painted with the palette over there. Because, well, I've already shown you that bust a couple of times. It's friggin' huge. Uh, it's 2 a.m. and 82 degrees here in Chicago. I don't know what the temperature is. I don't believe it's 82 degrees here at 4 a.m. Let's get some more of our little defining sharper white. Now here I'm seeing that there's already enough thin stuff there. I've got to actually go thicker. So remember, thick paint sticks to thinner paint and vice versa. This is telling me I need to go thicker. So I do. And it sticks. Yep. It just it wasn't sticking before. Now in here I need a I need some kind of shading in there. So we're going to grab something that's lighter. And that's it. I mean, just a couple of brush strokes in there. If I want to go a little lighter, I can. Boom. There we go. Then just leave it. Do I want that to be lighter or darker? I'm going to experiment here with some lighter coat. If I don't like it, I can just reverse that. Eh, don't like it. going to reverse it. Ultramarine blue. Bam, darker. Get some of the paint out of the brush now. And we'll just blend those together. Yep. Oh, look at that. We've got a nice little dark edge over here. Just have to be willing to make some of those little, those little changes. So we've got our little dark mix here that we're going to bring out some nice edges with in here too. Back to my ultramarine blue. There we go. Now that also going to be blended in. Here we need some more some more shading there too. So I'm ready now for the snow and uh, there we go, our crushed glass snow. We're definitely going to want one of our beat up brushes for this. So we're just going to grab something here, chunky brush. Now when it says crushed glass, it means crushed glass. That's why it says warning contains crushed glass. I don't wear a mask with this because I really don't blow on it and shoot it all over the place. But you can see all those crystals in there. Yes, those are glass crystals. I also suggest putting out some because you don't have a lot of working time with this. Now, depending on, and though this, do not shake. This is a brand new bottle. Normally, we literally write do not shake because what's the first thing you do? When you grab a bottle, you do that, right? Not the, That's no bueno. You don't want to be doing that with this stuff. So, And the more of this you have, and you're going to see this when I mix it in, the more of this you've got, the wetter your snow becomes. What we're going to do is we're going to set that over here. Set that over here. And then get this closer to where you can see it. And we're going to start out like this. We're going to meet these meet in the middle. 
So look what we got. Look at how melted that snow is right there. So the more of this we throw in, you see how it starts to get a little bit thicker? You can see that. Now again, it's you can do multiple layers of this. Look at that. The more of that stuff I throw in, look at how totally changes that. It's more of a powdery type of snow. I go back in with my water effect here. Completely changes it. There is no other product like this. You just have so much control over this. Now, you know, we don't have a lot of time to mess around with this stuff. So, let's get this positioned on here. Like so. And you see I can kind of push that, manipulate it. Here, let's get a little bit more. Boom. You'll get used to this. It's it's one of those things where you just have to play with it and kind of get used to it. You can use a smaller brush, but see, look at it. We can, see how it's got a little translucency to it? That is the difference between this and your other types. Is, look at this. Yeah, nice little puffy ball of that snow. But look what happens. See how it looks kind of more icy right there? Here's a little more of that now. Look at that. You just you don't get that type of snow with stuff like that Valhallen blizzard and the, the typical stuff that you see. You don't get this translucency. Look at that. See how that's hanging over the edge right there? You can't really get that with the other types of snow effects. So let's put a little more. You can see we just we put a little bit out at a time. That's it. That might even take care of the whole rest of this. I might have to put a little bit more of my water effects into this, but we'll see. All right, some more here. And maybe that, we'll just leave it at this. Here, let's mix that up. You can see it's got a little bit of translucency to it, but it still has also some white. That's a nice little blob of that right here. And then push it around. There we go. You'd be amazed at how far this stuff goes. I Like one container of that, I did a couple of armies with just one container of that stuff. It, it lasts way longer than you think it's going to. So now it looks like he's actually part of his environment here instead of just kind of sitting above it. Uh, let's see... Uh, yeah, at some point I'll try and get the AK Interactive Snow Sparkles. Uh, there's the other thing too, the little plastic balls. Uh, I saw, what's her name, uh, Kathy Millot was using those. And I thought that could be a fun thing to try as well. So see, look at that. See that gap that's there where his foot is? Well, I didn't care because I knew this was going there. Look at that. Uh, gap be gone. Yes, indeed. No more gap. Or is it mine the gap? Well, we just, we kind of, we've kind of like mined the gap. <laughs> we just put a nice little mine in there that just covered that gap. Boom. And then here, see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of dragging some of it. Look at that. And that's going to be nice and translucent. We also can use a, a somewhat smaller brush here too. Let's try this. Smaller brush to be a little more precise here. Uh, let me see. Uh, please tell me that what place is not going to bed yet. Uh, just tuned in on a lunch. Oh, it's Dino, Dino Titan Edition. It is 4.52 in the morning here in Central Time. 
which means in the UK it's got to be 1052, Germany, the Netherlands, 1152. I'm guessing it's probably about almost 7 o'clock in Melbourne. I could cheat. Let's see what it says. It is 7.53 p.m. in Melbourne. Okay. And yes, my phone is set to, well, London time, Chicago time, and Melbourne time. There we go. All of a sudden now our ice elemental looks like he's in a little bit of his home environment. Now we can double down on this too. Oh, let's see. It's, it's 12 hours here. It's close to Maine. Oh, mine's Germany. Now, let's see. That is that in the central part of Germany? Or is that south? That's not south. Yeah, it's got to be maybe... Is that northwest Germany? I'm thinking that might be northwest Germany. Now, we'll mix these two together. Oop, first, we're going to get him out of harm's way. Mix these two together again like we've done before. Now, see, here I can go with some more, see, a melty snow. So let's go with some snow that maybe has a little bit more of a melted look to it here. And we can put some of that right here. So, look at that. So does it look like it's a little bit melted there now? Uh, pretty central. Okay. Uh, you probably know Frankfurt, where I'm actually from. Mine's is 60, so about 40-ish miles west of that. Okay. Ah, uh, we need some right here. Let's get some in here. They're actually, well, we had been trying to contemplate the possibility of maybe doing some European teaching tour things and of course that then all the all the fun stuff happened and then that really just kind of quashed all those sort of plans but I mean I could just that was all the cathedrals that I could do I could just paint some cathedrals while we're there that could be very fun so again we're using the smaller brush now look at that it's just kind of hanging over the edge right there doing fun things. Uh, let's see. Dino, Dino, a date in addition. Become, by the way, is a legend of the realms of oils and basing. If you want to learn oils on a mini. Well, thank you very much, Lady Beat. That is appreciated. That is appreciated. I showed the image of the Cypher Lord bases. I'm just going to use the last of this. Ah, now you can see it. So we're just kind of pressing it down. It took a little while. This will take you a while, too. A couple of uses to figure it out. But remember, all this, that is, that is crushed glass. So you must just keep that in mind. Now here's some of that original stuff. You see we can still manipulate it a little bit. It's quite literally like we're sculpting with ice here, moving this stuff around. Yeah, having some. Now here, it see the snow is a little, it's a little choppier back there. We can get all these Don't fun textures. Oh, well, thank you so much, Robosh. And uh, oh, let's see. Oh, uh, and yeah, thank you very much. Oh, too much. Let's uh, let's have Wapelius here get. He's like, wait a minute, those are in my glass. And then he gets chased away by the big mean ice elemental. Now, let's look at our... So this is one of, actually one of my YouTube live sessions back when I used to be able to do those. Thanks again, Robosh. I appreciate it. Oh, and we have Fenrir's roof. So look at that little icicles there. That's the, the same Liquitex heavy gel that I use for water effects. So you can see, interesting, kind of the same color schemes here. We're not going to do any uh, blood splatter on this guy or blood effects on this one here. 
we'll set that here let's to pull that back down again let's find ourselves some cipher lords here boom here we go so here's a couple of them and I, just, I had a blast with these and there's the another one right here those bases just uh, they make a nice little theme for an entire army and I'm gonna show here some of the wintry type bases so again the, the melted snow icicles there mud snow all that kind of fun stuff mixed together there we go and the nice thing is I can just chuck this get rid of this if I want you know, I could have water sitting here on these little I mean it's literally like they make this cover for painting it kept see there's some of the extra crushed glass that fell in there so I can just kind of safely chuck this over the uh, into the garbage there uh, let's see never took one yet actually I like my style to be honest just too slow might share some pics uh, I do not have a discord channel what you can do though is either send me a private message here on Twitch with the whisper or failing that you could shoot me a, a message on Instagram and I'm just Wapelius on Instagram because that way I can actually look at it and really kind of check it out and then have some some more things to say that oh that looks neat because if I try and well I won't really be able to look at it on here anyways and I won't be able to really give you some solid information so yeah be sure or you know feel free to just shoot me some uh, pictures or something like that that is fine now uh, you can you can link it here if you wanted to so that the other people can see what you got going there I don't mind that doesn't matter to me so now this has actually had a little bit of a chance to kind of settle in place now we're gonna let this know look at the look at all those crystals see all that nifty crystalline stuff there uh, is Facebook okay too uh, sure that that's fine uh, let me see uh, this may have something I would love to paint the all oh, the abyss the forces of the abyss the, is that the that's not the floating brain monster is it because I actually have one of those that I'm gonna be painting on a stream here I actually have a bunch more mantic stuff that I'll be painting on streams <laughs> like a lot more and just now I'm starting to work in some of my darks here yeah I've been working in those lights now I'm gonna go back in with some of these darks here there we go see some nice contrast on that but yet it's still wet I can still blend if I want absolutely love it uh, let me see so what brand produces the glass and well, that is from secret weapon miniatures and on the YouTube channel like I said I have tons of videos that uh, this guy here that's a uh, that's on my YouTube channel I'm just James Wapple on YouTube I've got a whole bunch of song of ice and fire videos there oh we need some dark in here too yes yes indeed wow we need dark in a whole bunch of places right there that's better one there that's another boom okay I just needed to really sharpen those things up hello little hobbits spark my ganja <laughs> thank you so much preacher 40k that is appreciated much appreciated for the follow there and like I said one of my I've got several things that I'm gonna be doing in the next several streams here I don't know if I'll be able to do my really long Saturday stream there might be some mayhem over the weekend but so this is one that I w wanted to paint here it's a dark sword dragon and I, I made a little kind of diorama for him. See, I added some extra coins there to his treasure chest, some weapons, some skulls. This should be very fun to paint. And 
Let's see, we're going to be doing some more of the Dark Sword miniatures as well. We're going to be doing some Sisters bases. We're going to be painting some pirate type figures. There's a lot coming. What this, I think it's easier to say there's a lot there's a whole lot of stuff coming like a lot of stuff yeah let's uh drop a few more darks back here too yeah uh, let's uh, try this with the snow as I've done some frostgrave stuff yeah, now, if, if you check out my blog, I've got a lot of step-by-step -step articles, actually. So this terrain that you see here. So I've actually started doing new tutorials. This uh, That tower thing, that's going to be the latest thing to go up on the YouTube channel. But that backdrop there and all of that foliage and everything, there are those trees. There are tutorials on my blog. That's just Wapelius at blogspot.com that will show you how to use all that or how to make all that kind of stuff and you can actually see battle reports of me playing on that now those are my new that's my new Lord of the Rings terrain that I'm making there I'm hoping at some point to be able to live stream games of Lord of the Rings I that's gonna require some practical things <laughs> like somehow getting an internet cable all the way down to the basement of the house where all the terrain board is. We'll see if I can do that. We're also going to see if I can't add some more lighter colors here. Just targeting this panel there. That needed some light. So is that one. Let's do a little more here. Boom, like that. And look at it's this is oil paint. Yeah, there's a little bit of shiny on that, but then any if it was wet acrylic paint, it would still be shiny. So when you're doing your oil paint stuff and some of the stuff that's older here that's been here for a couple hours, that just I mean it almost looks like it's dry by comparison. I'll see some of these folks and they're painting with the oils then my goodness I mean it looks like they're just painting with like olive oil or something or uh, cooking oil like how the heck is that so shiny it should not be that shiny and I'm using colors like ultramarine blue thalo blue those colors are naturally shiny just like the colors themselves and you see this is not super glossy here Now I'll get, uh, get just reinforcing some more of my lights. Ah, I see we need one here. I gotta thin this down. That that's well, that's the key to painting with oils, no matter what. Uh, let's see, Fenris Roof. Can anyone else advise? The uh, the Patreon page. So basically, if you want to have access to the maximum amount of oil painting tutorials. That would be the $15 Army Painter Pledge because you'll have three series of five episodes, and actually well, four series, sorry, just on oils. So you're talking 20 episodes there. I think I've done three Dark Sword episodes in oils. Then there's a whole bunch of other standalone episodes in oils. So you're talking somewhere around 30 episodes. And we're talking two to two and a half hour long tutorials each on painting oils on the Patreon page. Because, well, as you can see, I really love painting with oils. And there's, there's always more that's going to be added. Look at that. See, that was just uh, too much white there. Look at it. I just went and got a little bit of my thalo green. Boom. This, something's going to happen here because there's just that, that whole panel is basically one tone. Let's uh, make it lighter. Back into our green here. No, I want that to be... No. I want that to be a different color blue. So, 
I'm going to go into my ultramarine blue here. Make that lighter. It's a whole different kind of blue. Look at that. Very different color blue right there. Oh, no problem, friend, Riss Wolf. Ah, I just got the stuff to get started. Excellent. Now we're going to just pop this right here. Okay. I'm going to take a paper towel. And we'll give that a huge scrubbing. I mean, we're really cleaning that so much. Then we're going to go back in here. We're going to blend this. Oh, look at that. So now I've got different colors in there. Some different shading. This needs something that is not quite so dark. Same there. And we're changing not just the the lightness or the darkness of it. We are also adding an entirely different color. One color is more reddish. The other color more green. Yet there are definitely lots and lots of oil tutorials there. A lot of them are, are live sessions like this. I used to do. YouTube Live all the time until YouTube kind of made it where I just couldn't do those anymore. And here, let's get the there. So then I just started doing the Twitch thing. I'm going to do a couple of those just like we did over here. Nah, that's another place. All right, up here I see something that has... Needs a bit of an edge, especially up here on the top of this guy. It really would be catching the most light. But you notice we're not just drawing a straight old line here. We're also trying to break that up as much as possible. Oh, we got uh, Practical practical Zaku. Thank you so much. Oh, he hasn't paid me for all his advertising on his channel. It's... Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Lady B. Uh, let's see, Twitch seems to be an appropriate forming for streaming. And that's what I do, actually. So the latest YouTube video is this thing right here. So I painted this with contrast paints. It's a 72 millimeter Artisan Guild sculpt. And this is now up on the YouTube channel. So you can see how this was painted. Uh, I don't think I did the the leafy stuff. I think I did that afterwards, but you can see how that was painted with contrast paints. That's actually, well, unfortunately, the, uh, what is, what is, um, affiliate. Your videos last 14 days, sadly, only 14, and at, my partner's 60, right? I have videos on my YouTube channel literally from seven years ago. And, well, that's why that's why when you sign up for the Patreon page and you do the Army Painter thing, that's why you get 500 hours worth of videos. Because you're going all the way back to 2013. And I've been making videos continuously since then. So, yeah, Gridlocks, you are right, is only 14 days. I wish it was longer, but it is not. But I, I try when I can to, to keep up with making the the Twitch sessions into YouTube videos. It, it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world because, well, some of them are very long like those Saturday sessions, which is why I, I just, if I'm doing a Saturday thing, it's generally painting multiple figures. And that means that I can break it up into several videos. I think there's, there's one of the Saturday sessions, I think I broke it up into four separate videos or something like that. Because, well, it was an 11-hour stream or whatever it was. But one was a basing video. One was essentially almost like a freehand video. 
get a little, yeah, I'm going to do a couple of those little lines here. Like you do, and let's take a couple of those here. And since we're using the oils, they, they blend in a little bit. Ah, that's better. Now this needs something here. So this guy, I'm just going to chuck in a little bit of my lighter tone, and then we're just going to do some blending on that real quick here. Poof. There it is. Maybe we double down on that. Again, the advantage of the oils. Uh, let's see. I've had some drop off. I wish I had saved. Now, the, the other thing, too, don't forget, is that you can do highlights. And those highlights, I haven't pushed. I, I haven't pushed the limit yet. But some of my highlights are like an hour and a half long. And that's one way. Now, if, if you only do, if you're, well, I know Twitch sessions are usually longer than an hour and a half or two hours. But if you actually just did a two hour Twitch session and then you did a highlight of that, that would literally last forever on Twitch. So, something to consider. Because when you look back at some of my past videos, you'll see that they're actually highlights. And some of those highlights for me go all the way back to March, I think. There we go. I got a panel right in here that's got nothing. It's got no shading on there. We need some shading. We shall, we shall do so right there. Maybe a little lighter here. This is that ultramarine blue here. Poof. Now we're going to go back in with some lighter stuff here. Yep. What's happening here? Do we need to clean up some of these edges too? Yes, yes. There. There is nothing there. Some of these ones on the back of them here could definitely use a ooh some more over here too but look at see all that dirty paint on that brush there it it's wet paint over wet paint so you got to go back get some fresh paint there yeah so maybe there's something where okay if you've been doing it for a couple of years Maybe even at affiliate stage, your VODs will last longer. But I definitely know mine after two weeks, they are kaput. Yep. Oh, boy, I'm tempted to add a little bit of a dark there, but I think we're just going to avoid that particular temptation. I have to put something here though. That's just that whole panel is just one same color. Well, let's go green. Let's do some green on this. I think you can see it's this one right here. Boom. And that was much more of a glaze. I'm just gonna pull over here. Look at that. Now that looks much more like a gemstone. Still, boy, I really do enjoy some of those greens and the original ultramarine blues. A line here. This, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Again, this needs something here besides that one same color. We got the thalo blue. Just lighten it up a touch here. Blend that together. So even that one little panel right there. Well, it looks more like a gemstone. Let's do something up here. I'm going to take actually some green here. 
Boom. Take some of that away. Let's blend this now. Like so. And you could now you could see that snow it's starting to to dry and and solidify. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty hard. It's still a little you can you could mush that. You could like stick a brush in there, but it's definitely much harder than it was. I see I need to do some something down in here cuz there's just a whole lot of nothing there. So we add a little touch of a mid-tone into that. And it's got that greenish look to it. Maybe a little more up here. So now we got some separation. We'll change the color of that. Ooh, wow, there's nothing going on here. How can this be so dark when it's actually facing the snow? So we'll make a quick change on that. There we go. Okay. What's going to happen there? I think we'll make that... Yeah, let's go even lighter. I just want to see what happens here. Aha. That was a good idea. It's not always a great idea. Sometimes it is. This needs... Ooh, yeah. A lot more happening over here. Like that. Take my darker tone here, and let's get the let's get some gradation onto this. This Hello, right here. Little Spark my ganja. As we welcome in Weewa, thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. I'm just enjoying, oh my gosh, just enjoying my oils here because it has made this immensely easier. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how much easier this is. So we've been at this, what, basically about three hours. Oh, we got Josh in the house. Oh, thank, no problem, Weeba. I, I appreciate it. I hope that I am pronouncing the name correctly. Remember always if if it's not uh, if it needs to be pronounced a different way, just uh, just say hey. It, this is the what would you say the phonetic pronunciation of it. Now let's get the this is back to that old uh, phthalo blue here. So how are you doing, Josh? I was hoping maybe to. I don't know if I'll be able to do the the hangout tomorrow I haven't been able to do one in a while it's just the uh, the hangout really messes with my my usual recording softwares and stuff so that's why I've just not been able to do those if it was the good old days of Google Hangouts it'd be different so hopefully everything has been okay by you as we do a quick little blend here just like we did on that other side we're trying to essentially make like a little gemstone right here let's take our darker color here let's refine this boom like so that looks a little bit sharper now I'm also gonna get some of that over here on the other side of this and we'll blend it get some of the paint out of there and just uh, scumble and scrumble. Look at how smooth that is. Bang. Let me see. I just want to... Ah, tired. Yeah, me too. It's uh, 5.22 in the morning now. Somehow, uh, there's something going on here. Ah, this is my ultramarine blue up here. I'm going to lighten it up a touch. It's this right here. It's actually another angle to this. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep. 
I was there for whatever reason the stuff I had there just it didn't seem to be working right and that's because there was one extra shape in there that I hadn't actually accounted for I think now we've got it uh, accounted for let's do some lighter work down here yeah because we got that snow right there once again we're just gonna kind of scumble that together the advantage of the oils even able to blend things after just hours of the paint sitting there but remember by this time tomorrow so with well within 24 hours this should be easily at least dry enough to touch if not already put my my uh, army painter anti shine over the top All right, there's some look at that that paint is dry yeah that paint on my palette is dry after less than three hours now, again this is supposed to be somewhat absorbent but still I mean that's oil paint and it is dry after just a few hours that is what the thinned oils can do for you but not thin to the well yeah and that that was not actually there was not a lot of additional white spirits added to that oh uh, let's see uh dino titan edition already lunch break's almost over well thank you very much for stopping by it was uh i hope it was fun and like I said, this will be up on YouTube as soon as I can get it up there so it's more permanent and you can watch it at your leisure. So, Josh, this is a ice, I'm just calling it Ice Elemental. It's from Kings of War, it's Mantic Games. Yeah, let's, uh, I'm going to go in with some of my Payne's Gray here. I'll mix it with our. Thalo blue, that's going to give me more of a Prussian blue type of a color. That Boy, I really like that. Eventually, I will get myself some Prussian blue. Just just because, hey, it's that's why I say you, know, you start out with your, your basic colors and then you can expand from there if you feel the need. Like the the fluorescent paints, which were interesting, they weren't necessarily everything I thought they would be. Especially since I realized that just regular oil paints can be really, really intense as far as their color goes. Oh, let's see the Admac. I can love to grow that 40k army. Yeah, actually, there was uh, someone that already said, "Hey, Jim." Uh, what about the Admech? Would you would you do some kind of uh, freehand on the wings or something like that? So I, I could see there's a lots of fun things that you could be doing with those guys. So see that? There's a little quick blending right there too. Hmm. Another case of me wanting to get some lighter tone there. Again, we'll just take a little bit of our white spirits just throw a touch of lighter color there and here that needs some more a little more shading to it and there you go keep it simple maybe we go a little further with that Okay, so that there was not much going on there. Now there's much more happening there on that one panel. I'm going to blend this out. I think that's actually a color that I just stuck there hours ago and uh, sort of forgot about it. And back to my ultramarine blue here. You know what? I'm going to see if I can't get a little bit of there. So I'm going to take some of that 
paint out of the brush and let's just push that oh, look at that it's kind of the micro version of our blending there I'm gonna take some of this much darker let's throw it there do the same thing a little more blend we're just being more and more precise with all this and again it's all oil paint and this has all been done in the last three plus hours including the snow including all of that what oh yeah let's uh this needs a couple of areas in here but you can't really unfortunately see what i'm painting there trust me it's needed and so is I'm thinking I get my phthalo green here let's lighten it up a touch do we have a pad of cane in the house we do yeah well uh yeah I think we started this well it was more at the usual time and for whatever reason, the internet did its crazy thing where it went away for about two minutes and then came back. I have no idea what's going on. It doesn't do that during the day. It's like they just figure that nobody needs internet in the overnight hours. I don't know what the heck is going on. I am going to take some of that. Yeah, we're mixing this into our phthalo blue here. That's, there we go. Ah, this is it. I'm actually going to, I'm going to take some of my ultramarine blue here. I'm going to have to thin it down because if it doesn't stick, you have to go one direction or the other. You have to go thicker or thinner. In this case, I'm going thinner. Ah, oh, okay. can of Pepsi. Actually, just anything liquid right now sounds really good, except I've consumed all the water and stuff that I had here. Yeah, that's okay. That needed that. Now I'm going to go back and... I'm going to see what I can add in here again. We're going thin. Thinning this down. A pop plate, yeah. Just a few of these. There we go. It, it doesn't really have a face, but now it looks a little bit easier, or a little bit easier to define what's there shape-wise. And I think I need to get something in that recess there. So I'm going with. I got my green here. Yeah, that's working. Maybe a touch lighter. That's the phthalo green. That actually does help there. I didn't even see these lines. Okay, that is going to help uh, create some shape there too. Very nice. I want some more of my lighter color here down by that snow, of course. And there actually was going more. That was uh, much thicker, actually. A couple of more of my lighter highlights on these. Surf, uh, yep. Just going to give it some more of these little lines to break up some of these surfaces like that. Ah, okay. So these guys here, that's, that's pretty darn flat. We need to do something in there. Oh, thanks, Pedicane. Uh, if you, now, 
actually you can see plenty of the examples of me using it on the YouTube channel as well. But that was the crushed glass method from Secret Weapon. So it's a two-part thing. So there's your crushed glass. And it is mixed with the water, the realistic water here. And that's what controls, in this case, like right here, that was a more melted snow right there and then here it's just so you can see more melted snow there more powdery thick snow over there oh I see I either have to go lighter here or dirt I'm gonna try the lighter stuff first like you do oh, I see some stuff back here that is missing some lights and some of this is stuff that I haven't even looked at for a couple of hours now once again I'm gonna take this that's my 222 liner brush and I need to put something in here there there are all these little areas that just kind of got some color initially and we haven't really played around with them much with them since. Now we're just going to kind of go back in and collect some of those. I want to... This is some of the much darker again. That's kind of my homemade indigo blue there. And just on these undersides here, get some darker stuff going on. Let that mix by itself. That's the other, that kind of hidden thing about oils that makes it easier to use. Is that in areas that are hard to reach, it's so much easier to blend. Instead of trying to, imagine trying to paint several layers of acrylic paint there. I don't even want to contemplate it. That's what made this so difficult in acrylics in the first place. So this right there, that can't be quite so dark and so flat. That needs to be blended a little bit. So again, all these fun little blends that I can do way back here. Much easier with the acrylics. I'm going to go into my later ultramarine blue here like that back into my lighter coat to get myself a better edge on this aha this needs a better edge that so does that Well, I never actually got one there, so or there. I think we finally got that area kind of resolved. There was that was another one where I first went. Wait a minute, where is all my shading on that? There's no shading on that. So I, I do hope all the different colors of blue show up in this. Now let's see, I headed to the art store today. Could you recommend some essential detail brushes? Now this is, these are Winsor Newton brushes. And there's a whole series of this. There's double zeros, triple zeros, quadruple zeros. They're the, the Cotman's. It's, it's going to be way less cost than the typical Series 7. And... I think there's, there's this is my double, there's a zero there. And I've got some, there's your quadruple zero, where's my triple zeros? Yeah, I've got triple zeros, i got double zeros. It is a synthetic brush, and I think I've, you've talk, heard me talking a couple of times about the advantage of the synthetics, as opposed to the sables, as far as how they kind of hold their shape and don't deform as much when you're doing things like freehand and such. Okay. 
go in with this a uh, little bit of the thalo green mixed with white let's see I'm going to do a couple little more of these lines here I think that's gonna be handy especially on these or yeah okay just a couple of those it breaks up that especially where there's a big open space it's almost as if there's supposed to be reflection and look at this see how they point in different directions it's another thing that sort of points to the fact that he's just a bunch of shards of ice put together he's a shard golem as long as he's not a shark golem, that would be a bad thing to run into. Probably worse than an ice golem. I'm go yeah, let's get a little bit of my thalo green. A quick little blend here. Yeah, needed that. Uh, let me see. Fenris, well, would you mind talking to the palette you have set up? Yeah, these are all oil paints, and they, as simple as my wet palette is, this is even simpler. I mean, really, literally doesn't get any simpler than this. It's a piece of cardboard, piece of parchment paper, and I just use a, what is that, the glue stick, glue them down. That's what you're seeing over here. Now, the wet palette version of that, Chinese food container. This is normally the bottom. The bottom becomes the top. The top becomes the bottom. And see this chamois sponge right here that I use? You see it a lot in the videos. It's a chamois sponge that's the same parchment paper. And you throw it over the top here. Seal that up. I've had these last for weeks. They cost nothing. Well, except for the price of the General Tso's or Mongolian beef that was originally in there. But that I get to eat such delicious... I get to eat the delicious food and then I get to use it for painting for months on end. I just, when I see people, good grief. I don't even want to think about how much those wet pallets cost. And a lot of them, they, they have to like wash them out with because they got mold in them and stuff and it's like uh yeah for whatever reason one of my pallets gets moldy i just chuck it in the freaking garbage because i got five more ready to take its place because the chinese food place is only a few blocks well a few blocks away it's like a half a block away so i can get more oh danny m how are you doing and let's see, uh, let's see, I use Cotman a lot since they're synthetic and I can use them with metallics. Yeah, I we've been using these Cotman brushes since forever. I mean, geez, since we first started painting miniatures, we were using these. And by that, I mean over 20 years ago, well, practically 20 years ago. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow, Grave Train. Or is it Grave Train? Ah, we need some. Oh, yeah, let's get the touch of dark up here. I don't want to always be just adding more and more light, light, light. Let's just go a little bit dark over here. Again, that is thinned down. That is going to blend in there real nice with our wet oils into wet oils oh they it's 6 30 here woke up meditated drank coffee walked the dog now exercising yeah that's actually well when i'm watching drax and thunderdome and jinxed and plushy and all the late night streamers i'm that's when i'm exercising and I try to watch them as long as I can until, well, I have to get things ready here to do my own stream. And I try to do these as often as I can. 
now there's there's just a lot of stuff to balance there's the recording the editing there's there's some projects that just are really tough to get on camera so I can't always and there's some things I'm not actually allowed to show there's actually some creature caster stuff that I'm I'm painting I'm just making recorded videos because well some of it is things you really can't actually kind of show on Twitch anyways but also it, it's timed for certain releases and such and in that case I can't always do it in a live session like my terrain tutorial here so let's go to my terrain like this that's a tough thing to do on a twitch stream eventually I'm hoping to be able to do that I'm just I'm trying to get used to it just in regular videos but I would like to eventually be able to do something like that on a live stream as well hopefully that day is not very far away it's just it gets uh, as you can imagine it gets a wee bit messy because that was all painted with weathering powders mixed with pigment fixer ah that I gotta pick a lane here that's gotta have something neither needs to be light or dark all right I think both will be good there so let's get me a touch of my lighter color here right there that just can't be that little blob there I had to chip away at that just a little bit here Okay, yeah, that's a uh, that's a little better there. Ooh, I see some other areas where I need some of my lighter. I don't want to say outlines. There's a little bit of uh, some edge work there. This looks a little funky. Got to do something with that. Ah, I think that helped. Sometimes breaking up these spaces a little more is handy. Now on the key there, that just got too light. Oh, look at this. We just, we fix it up in like a half a second. That's all it takes. Uh, let's see, Patreon videos for the Creature Caster. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, some of them also are, are multi-part things because I can't always be streaming for six to eight hours, especially because, well, Kathy needs that bandwidth too. So that's why sometimes all I can do is just kind of do the recorded tutorial versions. Well, yeah, some of them, there, there's even some more things that are well, the, the things are getting so restrictive now, I guess, <laughs> because on YouTube, I've when that a Morticia bust that has nothing but the face. Now, uh, when that gets demonetized because they said the name Morticia connotates violence and death, you know you're not in Kansas anymore, and people are just looking to cancel everything. So. That, that's why I figured it, stuff like ice elementals are about as inoffensive as you can get. Uh, I do have some other creature cast like, uh, oh, here we go. So this dude here, uh, this little guy is one that I'll be painting on uh, with the oils, of course. And this one, too. Where is this guy here? So Because these are already out. I mean, that's kind of a natural for oils, I would say, as well. So I'm going to try and paint them. Maybe even this Saturday, who knows. If I can do one of my super long streams, I'll probably be painting a whole bunch of stuff. I might even be painting more of the Dark Sword figures from the, from the Muses of Delphi 
big old diorama project. Oop, this, uh, there's another place. As each as I keep looking at these different spaces, I go, oh, there's another spot. Oh, there's another spot. There's another spot. Another spot. <laughs> and I need to get little bit of shading on this right see I just plop that green in there push down just now I got a little bit of shading there didn't need a whole bunch got a little bit of shading there what's happening right here that I need something there I'm gonna start out I'm gonna throw a little bit of my paints great well my homemade indigo blue here So Monix has mustered the Rohirrim. Thank you so much. Thank you for the host. And speaking of oils here, we've got, these are some of the very first live sessions that I did here on Twitch. I did uh, some Rohan. Oh, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of the Rohan too because I got all the cavalry going. I'm also going to be doing, well, sculpting here. It's going to start out with conversion type stuff, but speaking of Lord of the Rings, I want to sculpt in either like one sixth or one eighth scale the uh, Aowen and a Galadriel. And then there's something else that I want to sculpt. I'm going to show you some of my 2D art here. Yep, Monique, this has all been painted in oils. And you can see here my, my palette there. So we've got ultramarine blue there, a thalo blue there, cerulean blue, there's your white, Payne's gray, thalo green, and we've kept it uh, pretty simple. Pretty simple. And we started out with larger brushes, just kind of throwing the paint on there, and then we've gone in and we've refined it. Oh, thank you very much. It's the, the same idea with here's another one that was painted in oils also on a live stream this is on my youtube channel now but here you can see that the thalo green the warmer greens the magenta all that stuff mixed together again that was oils and we've got these two guys here so another example of oils compared to acrylics so one of these was painted with oils one was painted with acrylics and actually the one that has the most intense colors, even though one was painted with fluorescence, is this one. This was painted in oils. And you can see uh, just the, the blending was so easy to get. Get all those different colors there. You can see that the weathering, very much the same. So I've got a whole bunch of the, as a night haunts, I think. I've got a ton of those. Looking to do some serious oil painting stuff on those guys and then here's another example too so this was just a session a couple days ago that actually was again oil paint this one was done in acrylic nobody would ever know they would ever know the difference I had half the time I can't even tell that's why I actually have to keep them literally in separate places Otherwise, I would not be able to tell which ones were painted in oils and which ones were in acrylics. All right, here's my, again, that's my thalo blue, mixing it with my Payne's gray over here. Uh, it's, oh, painted three night haunts. Yeah, I've, I've got uh, the Ossiarchs as well, and I want to paint those in oils. I've painted a bunch of my bolt action stuff in oils, not just vehicles, but the troops as well. For sure. Oh, look at this. That needs some dark right there. And all of this oil is wet, by the way. Uh, we have kiwis. How are you doing? Uh, so, well, the, you asked the, the, the question that always gets the same answer. If, if it was up to me 
and it's just for various reasons I can't use oils a hundred percent of the time but if I could I would just use oils all the time it's just there's practical reasons well like this thing this same thing and I painted this in acrylics it's taken me twice as long at least to paint something like this in acrylics this in oils it was like a dream it was just so much more fun so much easier doing this in oils and it just looks a million times better in oils is it for everybody and maybe it's not for everybody for everything maybe there's some stuff you say you know what I, I think I'm just better off with my acrylics on this there might be other things where you say oh my gosh I've got to do this in oils so it, it'll depend kind of on you also what it is you know, what is it that you're looking to uh, get out of it as well that that's that's kind of an important thing because for me that this while well, the speed is a huge deal I mean it, it is quite literally everything but then there is just there's the enjoyment of it I have way more fun when I'm using it people always tell me sometimes they'll say yeah I, I could tell you were using oils just by the way you sounded you sounded like you were just kind of more relaxed more chill because you didn't have to worry about paints drying or anything like that you could just kind of keep going haha -ha, there's there's the reflected light I wanted to get into there and a lot of people when they use them they just say yeah the oils are so much more forgiving because if you don't like something you just take your finger psh, wipe it away you take a sponge you wipe it away and it's also well it's cheaper it is way cheaper to get into oils than it is any other miniature paint for the price of maybe four contrast paints five contrast paints you could get everything you you needed to paint in oils like for years for the cost of five freaking contrast paints I think we started using it as a unit of currency like how many contrast paints would this cost and it racks up fast you would not you would be surprised at how fast it racks up because the oils they're just they're so much more efficient as far as coverage of the surface you just don't need as much of them and, and they just well they're not gonna dry in your container <laughs> that's for sure I guess that then there's no container to spill and I just take the oils and I mix the the regular oil paint with the same white spirits that I use for thinning and such and put them in a jar with a little agitator and boom I've got basically miniature paint consistency oils Oh, let's uh, let's see if we can do as a little thalo blue, and my thalo green. Come on, there we go. A little combination like that, right there. Get a little bit of a blend going. There we go. How's about up here? Let's see if we can't darken down this corner yes we can we'll blend that see what that just did right there quick little blend no problem you know, here we have lots of our reddish blues over in this area yeah oh cookie slayer that that is uh, that is for sure yeah, so lunch yesterday cost 1.5 contrast paints 
uh, ate it about it went as fast as through one point <laughs> pint of the known oil so i mean I'm, I'm not kidding it's just around these parts this is going to cost you at least eight bucks this massive tube of oil paints is about the same price this i could probably paint with this for the next 15 years and it'll still be fine nothing's going to happen to it unless i step on the tube and I'll, I'll have 15 years of enjoyment, maybe 20. And again, same price. Same price. Units of contrast paint. Well, just we're going to have to, uh, what would be the sign, the symbol? Just like a frowny face or something like that? Just a sad face. Would that be the symbol for units of contrast paint uh, currency? I'm thinking that's probably what it would be, is we had a little bit of our thalo blue here, a little bit over there. Yeah, touch of that here too. Might even go touch darker. That is my Payne's Grey, basically my indigo blue, Prussian blue. Man. Yeah, I just need that little dot there. Now the thing is... <laughs> When you spill your lunch, so to speak, it makes you just as sad as when you spill your contrast paint. Although, those little watercolor trays that you see me using, that does keep you from spilling those contrast paints, that's for sure. It also has a tendency to keep you from using quite as much of it, too. Another little side benefit. I'm just uh, looking to get a couple more of my lighter highlights on my yeah, a couple of these shards back here. I don't want to go too much with that because, well, they're supposed to kind of be in a in shadow, but we need something there. And yes, you can paint with your fingers too. It's the ultimate free brush. I'm going to get that. Yeah. Uh, there, yeah, this is uh, not very well defined over here. Something's got to happen in this area here. I think I will go. This is my ultramarine blue here. get a little bit of a blend on that that's better yep just uh, needed something more right there now I think we're oh look at that we got to do something with that too oh, let's take some of our phthalo green here I think you can see it just it's kind of a more of a blob of white. We don't want a blob there. Look at that. Now we've got ourselves a little bit of a blend there. Not a blob. We want a blend. We need the same thing over here. Let's get it a little lighter. I did add just a touch of my white spirits to thin that down, make it flow a little better. All right. That's it. Ooh, something in here. That's all just kind of one tone there. So I'm going to throw a little bit of my. Yep. I left that darker stuff up there. Wow. That has nothing on it. That I literally found a surface that has not had any kind of paint touch it since the like three hours ago, four hours ago which it is almost actually four hours ago. Now, oh, let's see, man. Keeping track of all that light and shadow in your head without a value reference has to be so hard. Oh, Megan, how are you doing? It's, uh, I guess because I think of this the same way I would the non-metallic metal stuff or, oh, gosh, well, Watch the Gem Dragon video. Oh, I think those are Patreon videos. No, there's actually one Gem Dragon video that, uh, that's on the regular public YouTube channel. 
Imagine something like this only three times the size with actual gemstones stuck all over it. That was, that's something I really wish I could have done in oils. Oh my goodness. I really wish I could have done that in oils. Oh, I, 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 that probably could have put years back on my life if I could have done that in oils. Just, just like this here. You know, I see something there I wanted to get just a touch lighter on the bottom part of that panel. I just do it. I don't have to go back and try and match some colors or, or re-wet the paint or whatever. It just, it's always, it's going to be there for me. Oh, and the other thing, too, is even when oils are dry, it's still easier to kind of blend and push oils around on dry oil than it is to wet blend acrylic stuff. It's just, it's a crazy thing, but it's true. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, let's see, is that because you would have had longer to fix it? Uh, oh, the you mean the the gem dragons there? Yeah, basically I could have. Well, it, because it covers the surface so effectively, it it just takes so much less time that you can spend more of your time doing this kind of stuff where I can go back in and kind of see where okay I, I have no shading here or I have. Too much light over here. I can make so many more adjustments on this so much quicker. And I can also reach these areas here. Because since it's so easy to blend, I don't have to try and stick my brush in here and do like 20 layers. I just take the brush in there, a little squeak, boom. It it just it blends it enough, even in those deep recess areas. I'm trying to get myself a little bit lighter here. I think some of my... And there we go. Take some of that away. And we're going to blend it there. Because I know the, the question that started to pop up when I first really started showing the oils on the Twitch thing. I've been doing them on the YouTube channel and the Patreon page for, well, years. But once I started doing it on Twitch, obviously a lot of the, the questions came up again. And one of them was, can you do detailed stuff with oils? No, you should just do that with acrylics. And that is why I've been really trying hard to emphasize doing more detailed stuff like this with the oils. Just so, folks, it's uh, no, you can do detailed stuff with oils. Even when it's wet into wet, you can do detailed stuff with oils. Now it, it might require a little, like you say, the way you have to think about it might be a little bit different, at least than what you're used to. And it can be a different mindset, I just know that, because when I go back to acrylic, or when I go from acrylics to oils, I'm kind of rushing around, forgetting that the whole reason about oils is that they let you have time to work, time to relax. But you get so used to the hustle and bustle of the acrylics that you just forget. Now, I'm going to go back to my ultramarine blue here. Right there. See, look at that. It's just a little adjustment made. And then it blends out there. If I was going to do that with acrylics, I'd have to either do that in a glaze fashion or something. With the oils, I just say, screw it. I'm just going to throw on a color there, and then I'm going to play with it and mix it and be done with it. Uh, let me see. Uh, do oil paints need a different primer? No, not at all, actually. I just use these same old, well, any one of the 18 Steiner Res colors. And you can brush it on, you can spray it on. I use the exact same primer because it's just primer. It's also, to me, it's the best primer that's out there. And Patty Kane says, it's so interesting to see how you work with the oils compared to the other painter. 
There's a Russian painter. Oh, I think I've seen his YouTube videos. And he doesn't send him much at all. But he also skips that, that initial glaze that I do. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, well, for me, when I would do my... When I did oil painting back in the day, that is... That's just what you did. You you sort of prepped your mini or you prepped your canvas or your board or whatever it was you were painting on. You sort of prepped that with that initial layer. It, it just, you somehow was able to mix that in with the subsequent layers of color there. Uh, oh, uh, Jackson John. Oh, so it was your question. Okay, sorry, Jackson. I didn't. Uh, I thought that was somebody else's. Uh, I'm trying to look through the chat there real quick. So say we all. So say we all. I, we got Mike Disney. We have a Mike Disney in the house. Look at that. Thank you so much for the sub there, Mike. Now, Mike, did you see the 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 2D art that I threw up. I think you've seen some of Yeah, you must have seen those. And, oh, and if you're not already following Mike Disney, you need to follow Mike Disney. Speaking of 2D art, well, you're going to get miniatures too. Actually, so how is the how goes the non-metallic metal on the on the big folks sitting on top of the book? We all want to know. We got we got to know how has that been going? I'm going to go back to my ultramarine blue. Here. There we go. And actually, have you gotten your stuff from Dick Blick and or Secret Weapon? That's the other question that we all have. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, it's going great. That was, uh, that was just some really nifty non-metallic metal there. So, yeah, here's just a couple of... I'll put more of these up here, but... This was uh, the watercolor. Actually, this was made into a puzzle, which I couldn't put together because I was too used to seeing it as a whole. So, yeah, that didn't... <laughs> this is something that I'm going to be sculpting. I'm going to be sculpting Jakar and Lando somewhere between 1 sixth, 1 eighth size, 1 tenth, whatever. Two busts, because, hey, Jakar and Lando... And then this is a this goes back even further. This is from my art school days, and this is I like to show this because of that color unity, and that whole idea of a color goes somewhere it must go everywhere. So you look at those yellows. There's orange. There's green. There's gray. There's almost a red. There's almost a white. So that is that's from the old 2D art days, and we're just applying some of the stuff from there onto this. Ah, uh, WJ, oh, Greco-Roman Revival. Yes, it, it, that was, uh, yeah, that's right, she, uh, that was actually in my oil painting class, but that was kind of after, after the usual class hours. I think, uh, four or five of us got together, and, you know, we just kind of chipped in to have her pose for, couple extra hours or so and I, I brought in the pastels because I love me some pastels oh, let's see I, let's have a random crit thrown on a canvas and they asked for several million oh it is uh, it, it's definitely uh, chapped my hide for sure <laughs> we're, we're, uh, and I went to art school across the street from the Art Institute of Chicago so needless to say that created some interesting circumstances uh, still waiting on both things, and it's driving you nuts. Going to order some from another supplier and get the money back. That's just the darndest thing because now I just I don't know. Like for me, obviously shipping was dramatically impacted with everything that's gone on in the last few months. Just not one thing or two things, but all the things that have been happening. But if that, that the thing is that they haven't actually told you what the heck is going on. That that's the huh, that's the unfortunate stuff. Yeah, oh, let's get the little yeah, let's get a little lighter right here too. Yep. 
I might even I might even go a little lighter there. Why not? Go a little bit lighter there. Cause we can do that with oils. Yes, we can. And now that my snow effects are in place here, I'm going to see... Oh, let's get some lights back down in there. Take Mr. Blending Brush, push some of that around. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. We got Squeezel. Thank you so much for the follow. Gandalf certainly appreciates it, too. Now, this is my homemade indigo blue. At some point, I'm just going to get me some. Aha. Something's going to happen there. That's better. Oh, let me see. Why oh, do realistic art? We have cameras now. Uh, sorry about the stuff. Go. It is, uh, well, it's, there's been a lot of, uh, and just, well, then, I don't want to get into all of that here, but it has made things very interesting when you can smell the smoke and hear the sirens from inside your house. That's when things are a little more interesting than you would like them to be. Oh, let's get oh, let's get some darks over here, too. It's that, yeah, let's do that. And right here. But uh, as I was taught early on in the stream, I, I have a major challenge of trying to get two different types of 3D printers operational somehow in the next, oh, good grief, 48 hours. Hoping that they actually, that it, it's only just now that I finally got the stuff that I could even use to print with those things. And I just, there's no way, I can't just do dry runs with those printers. I had to actually have the stuff. You, you can't print with a spool printer with, unless you have a spool to print with. That's kind of a it's kind of an essential thing. So this is actually Payne's Gray mixed with Thalo Blue. Oh, let's see. Oh, actually I've been uh, for my birthday a very dear friend of ours sent us some some pizza from kind of one of the from Giordano's there. Hello, and little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Oh, Carmel Pereira, thank you so much for the follow. I hope I said that correctly. As I continue here to oh, let's get uh let's get a touch of this lighter color right or darker right here. Boom, right there. Another little spot of it right there. Okay, yep, yeah, that's uh that is very helpful. We need to divide up some of those spaces. That might need now nope. I was thinking of going a little lighter on that here. This is a case where Hello, we just got little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Uh, Shora Panero, thank you so much for the follow. Gandalf welcomes you in too. Now this needs to have something besides just all that dark blue, and I'm thinking, what's better than a little bit of phthalo green with some, with some white? Oh, Petacane got mine running now, printing some terrain. Ah, uh, well, there's, uh, yes, that uh, was so much fun, and you know, here's again a little bit of a taste of the terrain that I've been working on. So that is all the buildings are 3D printed, and that is just one-fifth of the stuff that's already printed and there's so much more that is yet to be printed and I think I've already done three terrain tutorials there's a fountain that actually you can't see it there but three three structures have already been done and there's a little scene from that tutorial there uh, let's see oh thank you very much this is all with actually oil paints here so quite literally traditional oils Cerulean blue, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, Payne's gray, phthalo green, 
titanium white like uh, boom there you go and what I did I'm just gonna set this off to the side so we take our oil paint here and it always varies depending on the color but I'll mix it with my white spirits here it gets thinned down to miniature paint consistency into a container like this hear that sound there's a little agitator in there and it basically is the consistency of miniature paint I'll just throw it a little bit why not so we're gonna throw it right over here where my finger is and this is a relatively new bottle so it should still be there we go look at that look at how that comes out of there okay difference because look at how it's gonna come out of here uh, that's a little bit more like peanut butter we don't want peanut butter on our palate we don't mind peanut butter with our chocolate because that makes a Reese's peanut butter cup and man does that make me want Reese's peanut butter cups makes me want chocolate and peanut butter and ice cream and pizza and burritos you're sensing a theme here of culinary desires uh, which worked them because they used the other people's buildings demos but the demo goes there's only to stay in this guy for said buildings oh let's get oh yes touch of darker stuff in here let's go a little bit darker with this so if you if you take a look at my blog it's just wapeliusblogspot.com it's actually linked to the my home page here on twitch go check that out there's a whole 2d art section 